It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Renee, uh, Andy, and Alex are here, plus my little friend, and we are going to talk about the latest Apple news, including a tour of the first public beta of iOS 12 and Mojave. They came out just now. Stay tuned. Mac Break Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 616, recorded Tuesday, June 26th, 2018. We're keeping Shatner. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by LastPass. Join over 33,000 businesses and start managing and securing your company's passwords today. Learn more at lastpass.com slash twit. And by Molecule. Molecule is the world's first molecular air purifier that reduces symptoms for allergy and asthma sufferers. For $75 off your first order, visit molecule.com and enter the promo code MacBreak. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest Apple news. Apple news with the heroes of the Apple news scene, Andy Anatko from Anatko.com. Hey, Andrew. Hello. Good to so see you. The secret you. is I'm always angry. Oh, you're not. You're the sweetest guy in showbiz. Thank you. I, use, I say things like that just to provoke compliments. <laughs> He's very good at it. Renee Ritchie is also here from iMore.com. Hello, Renee. Hello, Leo. I have not slept since public beta, so excuse me if I just stare at you. <laughs> we always. are in public beta land. And yes. uh, also from, and we're going to talk about that in a second, also from the Pixel Core, Alex Lindsay. Hello, hello. In studio, and you brought Malachi and Isabella. They're hidden huh? back there. Where are they? Right there. Hey, kids. Ki oh, they're, they're running the board. Well, <laughs> they nice. on, why aren't they on the show? That's nice. No, they're, they're, they're on they're, the TriCaster today. <laughs> they're okay. They're, they're, re they're resetting the blade server saying, you know what? You get a lot more bandwidth if you just take this this cache and move it onto this system. You know, you can move your seats. Can you see your dad anyway? You, you they're actually inventing VR morphing they, they right have now. A, they have a bad, <laughs> the bad seats. Hey, they have this, the, the obscured, obstructed view <laughs> on seats. So we'll, we'll get them better a better seat. Um, yeah, Renee, uh, did Mojave public beta ship today? Because yesterday... Right before the show. Right before the show. Dag nabbit. I guess I'll be downloading that. Yesterday, uh, the public beta of iOS 12 shipped. So before we start singing either of their praises, the requisite... Don't do this! You're crazy if you do this! Don't do it on a production <laughs> machine! It's not ready for prime time, etc. I would say... Uh, if um, yeah, you got to be careful, uh, especially if you uh, need GPS. GPS <laughs> stopped working in uh, iOS. Not that it doesn't work. It's unreliable. It, have you noticed that, Renee? I have not had that problem. However, I believe uh, since iPhone 10 and iPhone 8, Apple is much more aggressively power managing it, and if things go wrong, the GPS goes wonky. So I've heard a lot of people complain about it. It, it knows where I am. It yeah. it it. Um, yeah, it thinks I live like now after the public beta install. Uh, it feels like it thinks that I'm living uh, a couple miles from my house. Oh, that's so. not good. The privacy um, feature. I've had yeah, exactly. a couple of I, I like that. Then. A couple of timeouts where it just sat there and unresponsive. In fact, the first thing that happened when it rebooted, it sat unresponsive for a little bit, mm -hmm. but then it came back. Uh, I've had a, it looks like a couple of resprings. So yeah. it is. A, it's a beta. It's a pre-release yes. version yeah. of iOS 12. I've had, I have Microsoft. it on my. I, I have it on my iPad, and I put it on another one of my iPhones. The iPhone is actually probably less reliable, probably because there are so many more radios involved. Uh, but I, it's stable-ish on the iPad, so I don't know if you're not if you're not a daily driver, it's important. My iPad is an essential part of my lifestyle sort of person. I'd risk the public beta, but I, definitely not the phone because I will I, say that it, overall, overall, it's a heck of a lot of fun. So yeah. I mean, I, well, I don't. No, regret no, installing. we're doing the stop. Don't okay, do it okay, first. Okay, all right. right. Yes. <laughs> then we're going to say, say too. Yeah, how so awesome I, it is. Yeah. So Mark, <laughs> I like. I, I'm point, I'm pointing out my experiences on the iPad just so that when they <laughs> when they hear me say, for God's, unless you unless you're never in a position where your iPhone needs you need your iPhone to hail a hail a car, make a payment, make a phone call, receive a phone call or a text, know where you are. <laughs> I mean, if, if you if you just use it as a music player, your your iPhone, great. I go, go ahead and take the risk. The issue actually about putting it on the iPad is that you don't get the emojis. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh. Yes, they are true depth only, which and, are amazing. And so you need an iPhone 10 to do, and it's work. Poor Megan put it on her 6s, and she can't do the emoji. So let me just run through the emoji a little bit, because <laughs> this is the awesomest thing ever. <laughs> so, you know, now when, when they, they announced it, I was I'm like, not, oh, this is this is stupid. Tell me if I'm not doing this right, because uh, I think you have to launch messages to do it, right? You can edit it in messages, yeah. Um, if you want to create place. a emoji, you, you go to messages. And then you know you go where you would add an, an emoji, but you can, there'll be a plus sign that says new Memoji. Now, what's nice is you can create multiple Memojis. Yeah. I, I have a couple, but let's let's create a new one real quick so, so just give you the idea of the process. It, I immediately posed for it, and then I realized, oh, it's not looking at me. It is, uh, it's not a picture. You're just going to say, well, this is what I look like. For it's some a reason, character creator. Yeah. Choose the skin color. Uh, and the freckles, uh, I have no freckles, hairstyle, uh, now I was, got, you know, I said on I say, here's the ladies' hair. No, no, we're not, there's gender neutral here. So yeah, all of us are neutral. I'm going to have cornrows today. Uh, head shape, round. No matter what you do, you're going to look like a baby. There's so just, the age options are annoying for me because they're basically three-year-old, five-year-old, and seven-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> you know, you don't get a lot of choices. Uh, it isn't designed to look like you. It's designed you, you, to look like you get a, a real, caricature. You get a lot. Of, you get a real, real housewives of of, of of California look with the absolutely plastic smooth skin and. Yeah. Only there's more range of facial expression in the eyebrows, so that's and that's a difference. I, what I suspect is people will try less to make it look like them. And yeah. maybe create a character, right, uh, that they might want to be. What they feel like, not exactly, not necessarily what they look well, like. And because you could make many of them, you can. You can totally do that. Uh, you can I, duplicate yours, too, and add hats. It can make variants for your hats right. and your sunglasses. That's right, exactly. I liked having the hipster. Uh, so there we go. I've got a little Kangol on. <laughs> That'll now I'm done. such good coffee service. In <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, the first thing I did was stick out my tongue. Mmm. You've done all this, Renee. Yeah, you did this at the Yeah, WWDC. it's binary right now. You can't do tongue gymnastics. It's an in-out state only right now. There's no yeah. tongue tracking. Oh, you're right. Yeah. It's just in You're going to sound, yeah. sound like I'm joking. I made myself this morning. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, one more. Oh, look. That's I like great. that. See, that's, that's, that's the Amanda Connor version. I think as from, you get it more, this is more advanced emojiing. Emojiing. Yes. Where you decide, oh, it doesn't have to look like me. One other tip. If you want to do it in video, you go to video and then... Obviously, reverse and then tap the star, which is a new feature in the video. And now you can choose a emoji among other things. You could also do it in FaceTime, and then you get this really weird effect where it's you on your body in your setting, which yeah. is really weird. And the other thing it took me a while to figure out, Renee, is well, how do I get to the camera from here? You press that little X, yeah. and now you're in the camera, and I can record something. Hey, babies, welcome to Mac. Break weekly, and uh, now I have that. Now, can I save that? You can send it. You probably save. I can send yeah, it. Can, I think sending. You can send it and it. then save it. Yeah. So you have to send it to somebody, or you can send it. Well, that's a. <laughs> is that a share? And then you just share it to your photos. <laughs> and by the way, when I do edit, I don't have the emoji in here anymore, which is kind of a bummer. So you you kind of have to send it. Now, unfortunately, I've, poor Megan has been getting all my emojis <laughs> because that's I couldn't figure out. Oh, and here's the new emo, emoji. Me, what are they? You can also add AR stickers, Leo, so that you can, for example, enjoy a tasty Tim Tim Hortons beverage. Yum yum yum. While you're that looks like Tim Cook. And they actually Tim they link to anchor points. So if you move around, the straw, for example, will stay in your mouth. Or oh, the, that's cool. The dog will stay on your shoulder. Oh, that's really cool. And you can use it in FaceTime. Yeah. I think I think are 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 we all kind of over the animojis now that we have the emojis? Yes. Uh, the T Rex is kind of cool though. I still like the, like the yeah. new T Rex. But why wouldn't you want to be you or something like you? I know. I, I a character. Yeah. I, I I think that the the emojis have taken over the animojis. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll you tell can do you the though. big reveal like Tim Cook during the announcement. If you look carefully, there was a tiger in the top corner, oh. and then at the last second, he switched to Tim Cook, and then they introduced oh, that's him. Funny. So you can do that as the epic reveal. Oh, that's hysterical. To me, though, the really, and I am really thrilled about this, it, it, most exciting thing, I mean, there's do not, you know, the new screen time and all that stuff, which works. Stack notifications, that's awesome. Yep. But to me, the biggest, most exciting yep. part, Siri <laughs> shortcuts, baby. If you go to Siri and, sh and uh, search, 
Now, at first I thought, oh, it's going to be all canned. But no, it's been watching what I've been doing. And so I'm able to create shortcuts because it's keeping an eye on things that have happened. So, for instance, I went to my wallet, opened up my American Express card, and then I was able to make a shortcut. So when I say Amex, my wallet – oh, I don't, have a, I don't have it on here. It's only on the phone. But my wallet will open up. Yeah. By the way, I created that on the phone, but it did propagate to – my iPad. So your shortcuts will go to all your iOS devices. You can ask your HomePod for it now. We'll see what it does. Oh, my God. What would it do? That'll be interesting. <laughs> Just say, can't, yeah, probably can't do Amex on here, Leo. <laughs> let, let, let's try it here on my phone, and we'll see. So Amex. Oh, yeah, it did it. It launched my Amex card. Don't worry. There's no, there's only, I probably shouldn't show my <laughs> even my four digits. But, that, but that's really cool. It launched the American yeah. Express card from the wallet. And I notice you have workflow installed, Leo, so you can make workflows, go to the workflow app, then go to Siri shortcut settings and assign shortcuts to the workflow app before you get the shortcuts app. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So, that, but that means you really have now unlimited capabilities because you can you can launch workflow, create a workflow, and then have it be a Siri add your Yeah, the workflow. workflow app will actually be, will just be renamed shortcuts when it's ready to ship. Yeah. So all that will still be there working for you. Have they added capabilities to workflow? No, the, I think they're keeping workflow fairly static now so that it, it, it works the way you're familiar with it and they're adding the voice layer to it. But it does it does get a lot of benefits by being Apple technology now. So, for example, for years, people would just, they wanted workflow to work in the background like a system app. Now it can. So you're basically getting voice activated background running workflows anytime you want them. Wow. And that's a, that's a huge order of magnitude power user improvement. Yeah. That, that's why I was saying that that, that uh, on the iPad, where there isn't a whole lot of downside uh, in in losing losing a feature that could is, that could uh, threaten your life at some point, uh, workflows is not only a really huge time saver, but also I think that when it launches, it uh, it's going to take about a month and a half for you to for the for the system to have automatically built up a library of the most kick butt uh, workflows for you automatically, the stuff that you're going to really rely on. And why not get started on that so that you, you can hit the ground running when the, when the real thing gets released in September? I'm just and really stoked about this. To me, this is this is actually... A lot of what Apple does uh, is kind of adding features to the iPhone that others had or apps had, like the Measure app. Uh, Memojis is unique, I don't think. I mean, but there's been Bitmoji, so it's not fully unique. There is, and there is, there is some automation capability on uh, Android. There's Tasker, but it is much more fidgety and complicated. Siri shortcuts to me is an actual breakthrough in how you use your well, device. I'm very excited about it. And again, I, I think I talked about this last week, but I think that's what Apple does more. That's the, their main innovation is they get things out of the way. You know, they, they get, you know, they, they, they get it so that you're actually more likely to use it. It doesn't mean that they always get it right, but there's still a lot of complicated things. But I think that there is a, uh, often uh, they are they're taking something that we've already seen work over and over again and then they're just carving away some of the stuff that gets in between us and action and i think this is going to be exciting i think it's huge yeah. Yeah. especially as you start tying like, it into internet of things like this is you know i'm yeah, gonna all your home kit stuff will work with this too right and as you pointed out renee HomePod also will get these shortcuts. Yeah, HomePod, Apple Watch has them in the series shortcut. I was talking to Brian Romilly, who's a big voice first advocate this week, and he was he's going to use it like it's basically HyperCard for voice. Wow. It's going to be his new basic programming language. I think yeah. that's yeah. where a lot of people are going to have a lot of introduction. And he'll what use, automation can really do. to do that, he'll use Workflow? Yeah, and it's going to become the shortcuts app, and there'll be a gallery of it. You can go through and add stuff. You can add things to it. You can take things out. You can... And, and it's going to be accessible to people in a way that things haven't been since, since like the hypercard era. I, I think. love the least. idea that you can make HomePod more useful Yeah, because it's really yeah. not very useful. Except You're essentially, useful. instead of adding all this, this was like, I think an internal debate in Apple, like, do they just add a ton of skills like Alexa did and then you have you go through lists and add them? Or do they base it on the apps you've already got? Because that's a good indicator of the functionality you want. And it creates a much more manageable subset of skills for you to start with. And they chose that approach. So now you download apps. And as you use them, all these skills will sort of propagate, and then you can weave them together whatever, whichever way you want with workflow. And it's always a manageable list that you can sort of dip your toe into step by step. Yeah. What, what I think that it makes this really such a solid feature is that this isn't something – yes, you can string together your own workflows, but 
kind of like how nice the like the, uh, the the assistant is in Google Photos, where you didn't know that this these it'll just basically make decisions on its own, saying, "Hey, look, we came up with this really cool collage based on your trip to uh, to, to Ellis Island last weekend. Do you, if you want, pr press this button, and you can add it to your library. Otherwise, we'll we'll forget this all happened. The idea <laughs> of just having this little pane where you don't have to learn how to create workflows, you don't even have to be aware that this feature exists. It's just that there will be this magical box that that elves sometimes fill with really cool shortcuts customized to your daily flow and all you have to do is simply say hey that's really useful why, why don't you let me use that uh, uh, use that on a permanent basis that's how you get power into the hands of people that are using uh, a phone or a computer like an appliance as opposed to like a productivity tool uh, something that they have to learn how to use that's the most amazing thing about this for me is it covers such a broad spectrum. You'll, you will have the background workflow of voice triggers for the nerdiest of nerds. But for people who are just, they've never felt computers were accessible, they'll get a little indicator on their home screen saying, do you want your usual coffee order? And it'll save them having to literally spelunk through like, I, I don't know, where's the app? There's, oh, where's, oh, here's a list of things I can order. There it is. And it saves them so much interface action yeah. that it'll just, it, it's push interface. Again, like dawn of push interface. You don't have to go find the things you want. The things you want come to you. Did, did they add, did the, um, did I, did, did the new iOS add the, when the reminder that tells you when to leave for your meeting? Yes. <laughs> that was, and if, if you're late, it'll text, like it'll say, text Alex, I'm running late for my meeting. Well, the, the funny thing was, is that I, I got a, I got a message. I got a message after I installed it. It said, it said um, you know, the, the alarm went off and said, your meeting is at, at this time. And I was like, why is it giving me the alarm 50 minutes before, or, 50, or 52 minutes before? it knows before. how long it takes, Alex. It turns out that I should have left, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it, it knew, basically, it That's knew. Ba so cool. Here's the crazy thing. Based on the traffic. Right. Because normally... It was only 35 minutes away, right. but it was 52 minutes that day. It sent me an alarm. You need to go now. I should point yep. out that Android has done this for some time. I know, but... However, it, it is was, a great feature. But, what Android doesn't yeah. do is say, and would you like to text right. your attendees? Yeah, it'll also give you options. Like if, if it's a phone number, it'll say, would you like to just call into the meeting because you won't get there on time? Or would wow. you like to text the person? Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would like no, to this see. Is, this is oh, go ahead. Th th this really does indicate the sophistication of it. When like and and what uh, what Alex is talking about is such a great indicator of how our relationship with our technology is changing. Where uh, th I, I've uh, I've had that situation with the Waze app so many times. Where when I was for the first couple of years, maybe three years, if it told me to do something, uh, take a cockamamie I've never, yeah. I've never, I've never, I've never yeah. used before. I would say, oh God, what do you think about ways? And I would just take my normal route. Now I'll say, I don't know why you're telling me to, you know, to for God's sake, you. get off I-95 right now. Yeah. I'm simply going to trust that, 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 that I'm going to believe in a higher power yeah. who's going to, is up there to protect yeah. me. I, and so that's how it works. I often refer, refer to it as the crazy Google girl. You know, like, she, <laughs> she's like she'll tell me to do all kinds of crazy things. And I've just learned to just, just like listening so to my wife, I've just learned to do what I'm told. <laughs> pray, you know, for a long time too. But that's what's interesting about, to me, Siri shortcuts is that, and by the way, one additional thing, they've also dodged the privacy issue, Renee, because letting the shortcut, letting the apps uh, use what they know about you means Apple doesn't have to spy on you. So yes. Google, in order to do this, has to kind of watch when you go to work, we'll look at your calendar and stuff. Apple just says, no, we'll let the apps do it. If they have something to say, we'll let them say it through Siri. Right. There is a downside. So like the apps have to donate functionality to the Siri system. The Siri system based on your behavior will surface it for you. Right. The downside is that because of the way Google and Amazon do it, they're essentially using web API. So they get the full functionality of every service immediately because all the big services have APIs where for Siri shortcuts, developers are going to have to go in and do the work of surfacing what they think is the most important um, behaviors to the system. So it's more work for developers, more work for services, but it's better privacy protection for you. Right. So you might not get as many or as much initially, but what you get will respect your privacy and won't be used for any projects that you might not approve of. Right, right. Uh, and there are a lot of other features to iOS 12. And, you know, as I use it, I'm sure these will all uh, come up. I, for instance, just signed into my workflow or uh, you started workflow on uh, the uh, iPhone. It says, do you want to use sync? And I said, yeah. And it says, well, you need to create an account for that. So I said, okay. S uh, iOS 12 not only filled in the password, a strong password, but then remembered it. And so yep. that's going to really, I'm thrilled to see that. And not everybody's using, you know, our sponsor LastPass or 1Password. But 
this is going to really encourage people to make unique, long, oh, strong passwords. Huge, yeah, and there's huge things for them too. So first of all, you now get an intercept because previously if you gave anyone your device, you gave them your passwords and your wallet. And now Face ID and Touch ID will intercept before it will fill any password. So it's much it's much more secure. But also there's a password manager API. So if you prefer to use LastPass or Dashlane or 1Password, all they have to do is provide a hook and it will autofill based on those instead of based off iCloud Keychain. So you can wow. keep using the app you're always used to using. And I, and I think it's so important for us from a security perspective to get away from, uh, to get to biometric as fast as possible and get, and preferably multiple biometrics. I mean, I'd, I'd love to get to a point where it's, it's looking for two, the two part authentication is two different biometrics rather than, you know, silly codes, you know, that are easy to, much silly easier Silly codes. Well, I mean, the, the, <laughs> the thing is, is that, you know, we, we keep short codes, we keep easy codes, we keep all those things because for convenience, hard, for convenience and for, yeah. because it's hard to remember them and you yeah. forget them and, and you get locked out. And so, you know, getting that biometric process working, I think, you know, because every time I'm at, I'm somewhere, you know, that I don't want to necessarily show me typing in my code, I worry about it. And I'm just like, I just wish the thing would just look at my face and just go, okay. You're you essentially know. getting that with this because yep. they're using biometrics Absolutely. on the local device and then generating a random string of numbers to yep. give the site because you can never replace your own biometrics if they get that data. So it's almost like Apple Pay where they're just creating random tokens, storing that with the site and using your biometrics to unlock them for you. Absolutely. And I think that I think that it's, uh, it's the right thing. With it's the work with the workflows or with the uh, shortcuts, I just I still, you know, as an old shake user, wish that <laughs> yeah. that you could do a real nodal connection. Like when I say this, I want all these operations to happen and just be able to drag the things in that I want to do and connect them all to it. And and some of them might be dependent on the other ones and go do this, then then grab the information from there and put it into here and then do this. And I think that for the real geeks, I think that would be, um, it's it's like, ha and, I, and I think that as a programming language, it's the halfway between, shortcuts and uh swift is kind of a nodal programming interface that that would be easy to use to say there's all these things that i want to do i'm not a programmer but i want a little bit more visibility over what i'm going to do than than what i'm going to get with shortcuts or with automator or other things like that where i can tie it all to in i think it would be and there's no really variables easy. yet so you can't say order me two pizzas order me four pizzas you have to have right. a separate shortcut for each of the various that for each of the different things you want to do but right. version one so what else should we talk about? What other what other nice new features in iOS 12? Uh, maybe something that we I, I haven't realized is in there. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things that are just really good quality of life improvements. Like Face ID it will no longer fail hard after one attempt and make you do passcode. Oh, thank God. You can just keep swiping up over <laughs> and over again to get it. Oh, to I retry. did notice that. By the way, I noticed that last night. That was a relief. Yeah. Uh, and you can throw away app cards again without having to put them into the jiggly mode state. Uh, you can tell Siri to turn on the flashlight, which you couldn't do before, but you always wanted when you were in a dark room and didn't want to fumble for your phone. Uh, they're just, they added just a bunch of little things that have been bothering me for a very long time. And a lot of those have been fixed now. My biggest gripe right now, though, is they've added... They've been adding search to photos for a while, and it was it was okay. They had categories. You could type it in, and they'd use machine learning to identify the elements in the picture and give them to you, and it was pretty good. It didn't have a lot of categories. I mean, it, there's never enough categories for that stuff, but it was okay. Now they've done search refinement, so I can type in, like, San Francisco and get all my San Francisco pictures, and then type in 2016 and get all the ones from 2016, but I can't type in San Francisco 2016. It just says nothing. Because it can't tokenize, like you have to do the <laughs> tokenization on, on your end. And that irks me so much because you should never stop somebody from typing and never give them no results. You should do everything possible to find a result for them. So, Photos has nice new features, uh, which you'll see, I guess, as you kind of use it, you'll notice uh, search stuff is suggested. There's, uh, there's some new yep. um, little for Sex you. Sex suggested. Yeah, stuff. Uh, so this is the, generally, and generally, I think they, uh, they a lot of polish has gone into this. There's one thing, Renee, that I'm maybe overthinking. What's but that? This is on the iPad. They moved the time and date from the center. No, oh, you're not overthinking. To the left. Now, <laughs> yes, why would they, you yeah. do that unless maybe <laughs> you were thinking of putting a little notch right about there in the middle they also added all the iphone 10 gestures they overwrote the iphone the ios 11 gestures yeah. with the iphone 10 gestures yeah, so they know, kept the ios 4 gestures you no longer <laughs> swipe up for instance to get to the control center mm. you yeah. you do the from the ear 
What could um, possibly be coming? What could possibly be coming? Apple is so based that they just don't care about that anymore. They're just going to do it. <laughs> well, I'm really glad that there's a unified UI, frankly, because that was yeah. a big issue for me, that the iPhone 10 worked differently than every other iOS device. But this 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 room for the notch, I think, is going to, to me, I'm going to I'm going to make a leap of induction <laughs> here that maybe in September we're going to see a new iPad with face and will it be ID. a horizontal or a or a, land, a land, landscape or a portrait yeah. notch, Leo? That's oh, it could be it could be either, couldn't it? Because it's if I if I flip it, it's uh, sh yeah. See, so I think it'll be portrait. It could be either. It's going to be portrait. Portrait. It's, it's going to continue us down. Because it'll the be right. Path. We'll be right under the regular camera, <laughs> or maybe just eliminate the camera. It's just perfect. I don't know. For IGTV. I, I, I really see Apple figuring out a way to make Face ID, whether the two cameras are vertical or horizontal. No, really? I f I've, the Face I, ID I, will work. Only, the... only, on the, only on the basis that it would be so offensive it to, be, force, to, to, to force someone yeah. to, to, because an iPad is not just a handheld device. It's also a device that's in an easel. So if they have, if they give it, if they give you a keyboard case point. that want, mm -hmm. that prefers horizontal right. landscape, and they're going to force you to pick it up off the table and twist yeah. it. Yeah. I and I feel as though they're going to figure there's out a no way. There's no reason. Way face where, I, you don't have to twist face ID. Could, there's no reason why it couldn't work if it's on the side, right? No, it, no, it was just a, a generation okay, no. of. It was a. It was a constraint of shipping it for Gen One. Like just, they just had to get it working, and they they focused on getting it working one way. And in fact, um, I, I will, noticed that uh, when. I'm sleeping, lying on my side. It doesn't do the face recognition, but it's. But somebody t told me. I think it was my uh, Micah Sergeant told me it's going to start doing it if I'm on my side. You can also register an alternate appearance now. So even like if you're an actor or a cosplayer, or you wear like big utility glasses, or you you do have another oh. appearance, you can. You can't do a second person, but you can do a second. Oh appearance. no! I was told you could do a second person. You can't no. do a second person. No. Not designed for a second person. They would okay. try to make some some mashup of like a fusion of you. Oh, okay. But I could add. The other thing that's, that's good because I wear glasses sometimes. Although I have to say, Face ID has learned about my glasses. Yes. But if yeah, there's a dramatic difference, like pillow face, because I'm squished. like when Andy and I take on our roles of Wu Dong and Wu Song in the Chinese <laughs> opera, uh, we we need. The yeah, there are people who wear face paint, right? I will yeah. say that if you got if you had if you had the Face ID on both on both ends of, of no, landscape and one in the middle. That. You get incredible 3D data. That's all I'm saying. Well, can, I, can, can I can I say that uh, when I first got the, uh, the when the, the when the uh, when Face ID first came out, uh, a friend of mine was starring in Cats on Broadway. So <laughs> I did I did arrange to like for he, he actually like put on his makeup especially for this test to see registered his face like without makeup and then in the full uh, in, in 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 the full uh, old, uh, old, uh, asparagus uh, old Gus. The, the 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 old Gus makeup, uh, it what did not recognize him in the old Gus makeup in the cat's makeup. So there was now you can obviously there this to, now nine to five yeah, Max exactly. says that they have been able to use two different people with this it's dual not face designed ID. for it. I mean, okay. like you, you you've had two people unlock it with a regular face ID, but it's not it's not the design purpose of that feature. Okay, and you can't reset a single face ID. You have to reset both of them if you reset. Yeah. So I, it makes sense, and in that, the the language Apple used was Face ID can recognize an alternative appearance. Yes, that not another It's a another very different person. decision tree. Like for the for the uh, machine learning model, it would have to learn like right now it does you not you. It would have to learn not you, maybe you or somebody else, and then start going down <laughs> different trees. And it's just an order of complex. It's not impossible. It's just an order of a much more complex model that they have to build. Yeah. So. The other thing that's really interesting is that there's the AR, I'm going to call it the AR camera because I don't have a better name for it, but it's in messages and it's in FaceTime, but it's not in camera. And right now it's using just true depth, but it's not hard to imagine that come this fall, uh, there might be a better camera system mm -hmm. and we'll have a, an honest to goodness AR camera on both sides. That might be the explanation for the triple lens camera people are rumoring. Right. For an, I think for the year after next, but I think for this year, we'll just start getting, like we talked about last week, just so much better depth data. Got it. That we'd be able to do it on both sides. So it wouldn't have the infrared depth sensing, but it would just have better data. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need this one. This, uh, the, the camera, the, the L16. That's what we need. Oh, that silly camera with 400. The 17. Yeah. yeah. That, that, I don't know if I really want that. So, yeah, set up an alternate appearance. It's in the face ID and passcode. Uh, area set up an alternate uh, appearance. That's cool. That's really cool. I will do that uh, as soon as I have an alternate appearance. 
The one thing I also really like, and it's part of the Siri shortcut system, but it's also part of the Do Not Disturb system, is I would forever, like now, I put my phone on Do Not Disturb during the show, and then I'd forget about it, and I wouldn't be getting any calls or messages. Uh, and now it not only will say, hey, you know, Renee, you have your movie about to start. Do you want to go into Do Not Disturb? But at the end, it, you can set it to automatically come out of it, or it'll tell you when you open your phone that you're still in Do Not Disturb, and do you want to stop nice, it? Nice. And that saved me. Well, now I no longer have that excuse, which kind of terrible, um, but it saved me from being stuck and do not disturb all day. Uh, now, uh, let's talk about Mojave because that is also now in public beta. Yeah. Is it, I have to say, I am not unhappy with iOS 12. I don't regret putting it on my main iPad and my main phone. Uh, I mean, th th there's some hesitation. Maybe I'll miss a call because I can't get the thing to wake up or whatever, but so far so good. How about Mojave? Is it, what's its status? Same thing. It's a beta, so there's some quirky behavior. I've had it on both the iMac Pro and my MacBook Pro since WWDC, and one's been fine. I've had a couple, like some. Sometimes the icons in the dock aren't there. They come back. They haven't <laughs> abandoned me. Um, yeah. The dark mode is is really nice. I find that a little bit oppressive all day, every day. So I like that you can turn, you can switch oh, back and forth. Yeah. And Apple did a lot. Like it's not just a dark mode. It's like the, it has a lot of treatment to make it look seamless when you switch back and forth. And it also samples the background image and background window so that it's not uh, off cast to compare to what the rest of your environment is like. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a cosmetic change to be sure, but it's a very nice cosmetic change. And it's one that a lot of people, whether you're, you know, you're using pro apps and you want your content to pop or you're reading in bed, you don't want to be hitting the head with a pillow, all those things, <laughs> it, it, it's much better yeah. for not only that, but uh, it took them. It took Apple this long to allow us to really choose our own highlight color for yes. like highlighting of buttons. So we're, instead of having just you, have to, you have two choices. You 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 have both options, both slate gray or blue. Uh, now, if you really want, if you want a tangerine highlight color, if you want like a red highlight color, as these are these are colors are uh, when I uh, when I set up the the, the developer beta. It was like I, I quickly wound up with leaving my Mac in dark mode, but like a sort of like a sort of a burnt tangerine highlight color. And it feels like I'm running Linux. I feel like a badass. I use purple because I thought Andy would appreciate it. <laughs> if you want to roll back from either iOS 12 or Mojave, you can't. Yeah, just make a backup first. You know, okay. Please make sure you do your backup first. So back and they do really emphasize that, by the way. Yes. And if you when it what happens when the release versions come out? Do you are you now out of the beta program or it depends. Like you can delete the certificate. It's all a certificate system now. So you put a certificate on your computer or your phone and it knows to look for the beta branch instead of the release branch. And you can delete that at any time. Uh, otherwise it'll just keep you going into the next because there'll be an, a twelve point one right. and a, a Mojave point one beta. So it'll keep you going that way if you want. So go to beta.apple.com, the Apple beta software program. Public betas are available now for iOS 12 and Mojave. How about tvOS? Is that a public beta yet? Yep. Everything but watchOS. They don't do watchOS because the recovery is so terrible. Yeah, uh, honestly, just terrible. <laughs> you basically have to go to an Apple store if anything goes wrong. So they don't do public betas for that, but for everything else. The other thing that's really cool is I've been trying is the the... the Apple is so in on the privacy stuff, and they have the intelligent private uh, tracking prevention, which last year just used ML to learn about cross-site cookies and prevent them from surfacing. And now it's stamping out Facebook like buttons, share buttons, comment buttons, uh, fi device fingerprinting, so they can't. They were taking snapshots that was unique configuration profiles for your computer and trying to track that across different websites. So now it gives an obfuscated, simplified profile. Um, all of that stuff is really nice. Yeah. It's it's I I have a feeling that uh, Apple is implementing this better than uh, Google did when they tried to do something kind of similar uh, with uh, the new versions of Chrome that they released, where quickly people figured out that oh well my games aren't working anymore, my video sites aren't working anymore. It's not it's being it's too powerful and it's not but it's being too powerful in the sense that it's not being smart enough. Whereas it looks like or again at least in the version uh, in the non beta version that I was using, uh, it feels like the new Safari is. Good. It seems it feels like it's doing a smarter version of it. It's, it feels like you really do have just this ninja that is effectively only killing <laughs> the person you told it to kill with no collateral damage. And it asks you, like it gives you a little drop down saying, do you want this stuff? And you can say, yes, I yeah. do. And then it's fine. But if you don't, like it's not like, oh, my God, I never knew this stuff was even there. Yeah.
that, that's an underappreciated feature. Communication with the user uh, is just as important as the automation that makes these things work well. The user has to feel as though they're in complete control of the situation. And like any boss of a company or any good boss of a company, you don't necessarily need to do everything that all your employees are doing, but you at least need to know what your employees do so that you have a good pick. You, you, you are in control of this device you actually own. So that's, that's another area in which I, I love uh, how Apple designs the software and services. One uh, nice thing about Mojave as opposed to iOS or tvOS is you could make a bootable Mojave disk. Yeah. So you don't have to be like you could choose, you know. So if you made a bootable, is it hard to make a bootable disk? You download an installer. It's the same old process where you extract yeah. from the package. And some people just put it on a partition. I mean, they just or they put it on Do an that. external drive. Yeah. Or, yeah. That way you boot to it. You could play with it, at any, but you can go back to uh the old version if you want high Sierra. There's a company, I just can't think of the name of them, that I, I just pulled it out of one of my other computers and I haven't put it into here yet. Oh, they make the SD card? The SDR yeah. card becomes a, <laughs> a uh, yeah second drive. Another drive. Yeah. And it's a great yeah. way to do those kind it of things. It was tests. a mini mini drive or something like <laughs> something that. Like I had one. Like yeah. Or something, but it was it. a Kickstarter. Yeah. yeah it, works, it works well. Yeah. It's not very fast. It is pretty fast. Is it? Mine is fast. Well, it depends on how fast the, the card is. I put a really fast 10 card yeah, in there. Yeah. 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 I'm just well. I'm I'm just nostalgic enough to want to put it on SD cards just so I could relive what it was like in 1986 <laughs> to have to like switch Swap, test, switch cards like every time I want to like launch or switch apps. <laughs> oh, the awesome. good old days. I just remember when we read. I just I can still remember when we read about the idea that there would be these micro SD cards that had 256 gigs, and we were like, <gasps> no, no way. <laughs> you know, like I remember Waz coming into the old screensavers with a uh, USB key hang, hung around his neck. He said. This holds two gigabytes. <laughs> and we were all <laughs> aghast. <laughs> Only the Waz would have a a two gigabyte USB drive. Cost as much as a Bentley in a spread. <laughs> I probably did at the car. time. Yeah. Now, like, I'm as, 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 as amazed as I was at the time about, like, a one gigabyte flash drive. When I, when I was cleaning out my house, I thought, oh, my God, a 16 megabyte SD card. I know. What, the, what so did I you do take, with that? Like, I can take one JPEG with my camera so long as it's like there's not a whole like a brick pattern with a lot of detail. It's uncompressible. <laughs> I, it's uh, adorable. And, uh, I bought a Daniel uh, Rubino just uh, you know, just reviewed a one terabyte Dell uh, flash drive. It's it just like, goes yeah. inside your computer. See, the, it's yeah, like seven hundred bucks, but it's one terabyte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, now, this is I, I get I get so like uh, excited and confused when I see like a half a terabyte like flash drive like a flash key now we're getting into i could see myself losing this device yes. and this is this is the reason why i i own flash uh, flash keys you know for transportation but i kind of make sure i don't buy the really really big I made ones. A mistake of doing that i bought four 128 gig they're beautiful they were aluminum mm -hmm. 128 gig ss uh, you know thumb drives and i can't find them i don't there's someone oh, do you remember that story <laughs> too like easy they to took lose. the final version of return of the king and they put it on an ipod because the only thing big enough at the time <laughs> and they had to yeah. walk it from the fiber to Weta and a guy started chasing them and he didn't know what it was about and he started running trying to get to Weta because he had the only final copy of it on an iPod. That's don't when I started to worry it. about Don't steal yeah. it. Uh, I bought just uh, this week I'm thinking about my vacation in the fall we're going to have some water sports so I wanted a little point and shoot waterproof point and shoot. Got mm -hmm. the new Olympus TG5 which is a nice little dust proof yep. water. I've had it before. Uh, it's really nice. So I put. I thought, well, I have a 64 gig SD card. I put it in there. It says you can get 9,999 pictures. <laughs> it's like, oh, that probably lasts me the entire lifetime of the camera. Why don't, why, don't I, why, don't I, why don't I just? Why don't I just like push down the shutter button when I when I get off the plane? Yeah. Tape it down. Just the whole the whole trip. <laughs> take off the tape yeah. when I get home. Yeah. 9,900. And I think it didn't say 10,000 only because it didn't have more digit space. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like asteroids. It, it looped yeah, over. It looped. I have I have to admit that I've gotten into buying... I haven't gotten one for my 10, but I've gotten into buying, you know, the the, the diveable shells for the iPhone. Do they, they make them? I think they make them for the 10. I, I have them for an older phone. I have them ah, six. It makes me nervous. But I mean, they, these are theoretically does, waterproof, right? It does but, make me nervous, uh, but I've, you know, I tested it gingerly with an older phone. And then started using it. And what's great is that then it's just on your roll. And yeah. it's got the GPS. And it's got all the other got things everything. in it. Yeah. But you can shoot underwater and, you know, all the other stuff. I'm going to... This Olympus was 300 bucks. It wasn't that expensive. That's great. And I thought... Yeah. The, the, if it's it, great to have one that you can gets take. The, the nice thing about it is that you're not going and traveling where you're... You have a camera that you could lose. You right. lose your phone, you're really bummed. Yeah, I don't want to lose my yeah. phone. Yeah, so it, I, I definitely have 
also throw away cameras. Also, Olympus, that's like the, they've been making these really absolutely indestructible cameras for like 10, 12. The, the first one I had, I tried to kill it and I just plain couldn't. And the idea of having three, if I, if I were going on vacation, I would consider as a, if it were a really good one with my family, I'd, maybe, I'd consider getting an action camera, but I don't know whether I would decide to get a, something like a GoPro or something like the TG5 oh. because the TG5, you're taking much better pictures. You're taking a really good video, uh, but also it really is. You can drop it. No problem. You can get it wet. You can get it in sand. No problem. Uh, I'm really, I'm actually, I, uh, the last one I had was about eight or nine years ago. Uh, and that was a loaner that I decided to just buy because I was yep. I was using it enough. But I'm actually considering owning, adding one to my to my stash of cameras because there are those like two or three times a year where, okay, I think my OMD EM1 is waterproof and dustproof enough for this. I don't know that it's waterproof and dustproof enough for this. And I would love to have a camera with a great. TG5. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll bring it next time, and you can yeah. you can play with it. I mean, it's it's a point and shoot, but it's not hugely expensive. F two lens, which is nice. Four X zoom, mm -hmm. it does shoot raw. Yeah, it's great, which yeah. is nice, and four K video. So, and the main thing, uh, you know, I think I had it because of you, uh, 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 Andy. I bought it like the TG one or something, and so I decided to get this, um, you know, up to date because I gave the the other one to my one of my kids at one point. Uh, down to 15 meters. There are, you know, you can go deeper if you want a scuba. You can get a deeper one than this, but this is fine for me. I'm not going down past more it. than 45 um, feet. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 50 feet's enough for That's me. A long I, way down. Yeah, I think I'll probably uh, one Basically, or two feet. Basically, they'll, they'll, they'll be able to take the camera off your body and find out what the damn fool thing you did that got you drowned. That's basically <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's, it's tougher. Than, I don't. Want, I don't need a, exactly. a, a camera that's tougher than I am. It's yeah. only 12 megapixels, but I think that they do that so they can get better low light uh, performance. I don't think they. Yeah, I think it, they realize nobody really wants. A, yeah. You know, I mean, this, well, this is the other shit. camera I'm bringing is 42 megapixels. So I think huh. that yeah, I'm right. probably set. But I, but see, this one I wouldn't want to get wet. That's the, yeah. that's see, the people that takes all the fun out of it. <laughs> yeah. People people don't, people don't appreciate that. You you would much rather have a 12 megapixel sensor that's way way more light sensitive, because they'll they'll take a cam they'll take their their waterproof camera like, or their phone in waterproof housing, and then they'll go down even just like eight feet close to shore and surprise that oh here's a nice picture of dark green with flashes right. of dark blue right it's there's like no the, the, the cameras are not set up to get light that gets that's been filtered through eight feet of seawater exactly this has a backscatter mode that uh, just, they i haven't tried it but it supposedly does a good job underwater and stuff like that i don't know it's it's cheap enough the list is 380 i think i got it for 340 on amazon it's cheap enough that use a lot of bioluminescence leo yeah a lot of bioluminescence. yeah we're ahead and, and until you get to thirteen thousand feet when the when the non-terrestrial intelligence uh, <laughs> uh spaceship gets there then because like like when i say they're bioluminescent they also make sure that you can breathe at crush depth so <laughs> this this i don't remember if the old one had this but they have these Super macro modes now in these, which is kind of cool. So you can get, they call it microscope mode, mm -hmm. but it's really a macro mode. Right. But it really can get pretty close to stuff, which is also kind of fun. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's an adjunct. Because uh, what I, what I said I'm going to do on this trip, Chris Marquardt just convinced me to only bring a 50. Where is the trip? Oh my God, it's an amazing trip. Are you allowed to tell? Yeah. <laughs> go, start in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Go to <gasps> Portugal, Spain, oh, boy, Malta, wow. France. <laughs> Italy, we're going to Posit Positano. We're going to Amalfi, the Amalfi Coast. But other than that, we're going to Morocco. <laughs> going to oh man. So it's uh, how long are you? In, how long are you traveling? It's almost a month. Well, when? Oh, September. I won't be here. Just warning you. Nothing's happening, Leo. It's fine. Leo, just, just yeah, nothing ever you. happens in September, does it? Oh, no, I'm actually feeling terrible. I don't know why I booked a trip. During the Apple announcement, <laughs> <laughs> once again. Uh, well, who knows? They haven't announced it yet. Maybe it'll be October. <laughs> no, it's just, you know what? I feel so bad that they don't invite me. I decided, well, screw you. I'm going to Barcelona. <laughs> now I'm not available even if you try <laughs> to invite me. Oh. But Tapas and ham. That's I'll, where, where that's I'll, it. While you, while you <laughs> losers are going to be writing 80,000 words. <laughs> the good news is I know I'll be able to order that iPhone from wherever I am. <laughs> instantaneously right. using face id and and you and the, the ability you're, you're going to be in the presence of so many wonderful fezes not the, <laughs> not the, not the, not the, not bring, the awful ones from this party is basically Central. a hat trip i'm yes. going to bring back yes. hats from every land i endorse like this <laughs> endeavor 
It sounds like it's going to be a scene from Brooklyn Nine-Nine where Leo tries to order, but his hands are so covered in Yabon Berica that no, it's not registering. <laughs> it's too slippery. Oh, Give me oh, money. Come on. But no, so Look, I'm only going to bring a, a fixed prime <laughs> manual focus. Ooh. And then this is the this is the A7R2, which has a 42 megapixel, mm -hmm. really like almost medium format. Right. So this is going to be like for a really good picture that takes an hour to compose and shoot. <laughs> and then I'll have the point and shoot in my phone. <laughs> Just firing, <laughs> just firing. Uh, anyway, I don't. I shouldn't really. I don't. I'm sorry. I brought it up. Uh, I, uh, people get I'm mad not, at me when that, I talk about vacations. I should. Because so now, hungry, right? thanks to you, Renee, mm. I'm thinking of ham again. Yeah, ham. I know. I, well, I, I have. I haven't been to Barcelona in like seven or eight years, but I still remember. Just like I, re just like I remember all the uh, all the uh, all the Guinness I drunk in Dublin. I have lightning memories of every single ham that I ate in Barcelona. Yes. For <laughs> all right. Well, I want to really make you jealous now because I, when we go to town, sometimes I just book. There's a thing called tours by locals, where you mm -hmm. get local people to take you around. And I booked a tapas tour uh, uh, for one of the evenings. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Yeah. <laughs> Stop See, eating, stop eating a day and a half before. A local Barcelona native is going to take You're going to need that macro lens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to roll out so of there. hungry right now. So uh, our show today brought to you by a very important sponsor. One I what, don't tell them this, but I really would. Uh, we've been giving them free ads for about 10 years since mm -hmm. they first came out. LastPass. Uh, it actually, uh, I've been using LastPass almost forever personally. Steve Gibson, I convinced him that he should be using it. But first he said, no, I want to talk to the founder and the te technology guy and see. And he, he interviewed Joe Segrist. Joe was great. He showed him the code, the JavaScript, everything. Steve Gibson, this was some years ago, gave it his th seal of approval, still uses LastPass. And then we started using it for the company because something happened. We had an engineer who couldn't remember all of our passwords, like to our website and our servers and the, you know, the money and so he just put it on a web. He published it on a public website so he could find it easily. And when that happened, I realized we need LastPass at work as well. And we got LastPass Enterprise. Now we have we have secured all of the most important stuff. Eighty one percent of breaches uh, are caused by weaker reused passwords. You want to protect your passwords at work. Every password in our business is protected, but it doesn't slow down employees. It's the onboarding's easy, password autofill, both on the uh, on the phone and in the web, makes it really easy to use. We get automated security reports. We take control of our passwords. It simplifies, LastPass Enterprise simplifies password management for companies of every size and centralizes control of employee passwords and apps. This was something what we, we really needed. Every employee gets their own secure vault for managing passwords. We set master password requirements, lengths, and things like that. We also require two-factor. You can do that as well, and we do it. Uh, you can restrict access to specific locations and devices. All of LastPass's versions do that. That was a nice thing. When I got to Japan, LastPass, I tried to use LastPass. I said, well, you're not, you've said you don't want to be able to use it outside the U.S. You better, and so I had to re-authenticate uh, directly with LastPass so I could use it. It wasn't a hard thing, but it was a great thing because... That keeps somebody from, you know, some somebody in Russia or China from hacking my LastPass. Uh, you have, uh, as a, as the enterprise version has LastPass uh, password resets, we can turn those on. Um, it really makes it easier to share passwords too. Employees can share passwords within folders. Folders are limited to certain classes of employees, <clears throat> so we keep everything secure. And of course, everything's encrypted at device level with AES two fifty six. Prevents man in the middle attacks. It's a trust no one system. Even LastPass doesn't have access to the contents of your vault. Uh, it's just the best way to secure your business, your personal. If you're not using LastPass, do me a favor. Do it right now. LastPass Premium for personal use. LastPass Families for the entire family. LastPass Teams for teams are 50 or less. And LastPass Enterprise for the businesses at work. And at home, fix your password woes with LastPass. It's the number one most preferred password manager. It's the one we use. And by the way, every employee, we do this as a benefit, but it also is a benefit to us. Every employee gets their own personal LastPass when you work here. And that's because I want everybody to be secure. LastPass.com slash twit. Protect every password in your business. LastPass.com slash twit. And individuals, please. You should be using it too. It's not it is easy, it's fast, it works. We've, we've been using it for 
I don't know, five or six years. Oh, yeah, we run yeah. the whole company. Like, and, and what's great about it is we do a lot of things that are secure, and a lot of times I don't want to share it. So, I, you know, you have a folder that is these these things that are get, there. They don't get the password. They never see the password. They yeah. can log in, but they don't right. get the password. I you love know? that feature. They can't change it. They can't see it. And then you also set it up. I set it up so that uh, anytime you log into LastPass, I like, from a security perspective, it logs out of everything else. So every time I move along, I only have one thing right. open, right. and that's just a setting that you can set as an admin. But it's it's a... I there mean, are a lot of nice platform. tweaks you can do to it uh, that make it even more secure. And yeah. I, I turn on a lot of those uh, features, especially two-factor. I was For a long time, I was using it with a YubiKey. So you yeah. had to have a hardware token to, to log into it. Yeah, um, That's it's a great. nice feature as well. Uh, all right, Renee Ritchie, let's get the latest on the brute force password hack. Um, not, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> this, so, or not, yeah, as the case may yeah. be. So the idea was... Um, uh, that an attacker could send all the passwords at once. Yes, with no spaces. In one string with no spaces. And that somehow, I, and this puzzled me, the yes. iPhone would see each four digits separately, but wouldn't count them. So it wouldn't trigger the password, you know, the data erasing feature, because it, would, it wouldn't, would, it would see it as one attempt. Um, so Ionic, who's the guy who uh, created this, uh, oh, uh, he didn't create. I forget. Hacker Michael, Fantastic did. Yeah, Hacker Fantastic created it. Ionic was very quick to, to say it doesn't sound right to me though. Right. So uh, yeah, Hacker Fantastic then said it seems Ionic might be right. The pins don't always go to the secure enclave in some instances, uh, due to pocket dialing overly fast inputs. So although it looks like pins are being tested, they aren't always set. Some are, some aren't. So you and I guess when he tested it, he lucked out. That he, yeah. he had a pin that was tested, but it wouldn't guarantee you the entire set. Apple confirmed this to you, Renee. Yes. Um, the, the, the recent report, this is Apple's statement that they gave you. The recent report about a passcode bypass on the iPhone was an error and a result of incorrect testing. But yeah. it does sound like some of the codes go... I, I, there was a whole long list on Twitter, and you could follow um, Hacker Fantastic's threads just to see all of it. But it, it sounds like he sent a bunch and then sent the correct one as the as the lead of a string, and that's why it worked. But that was just happenstance. It would have to be the first thing in the string yes. for it to work. Yeah. Okay. He also pointed out that it does take some time, and if you had a six-digit code, which all modern devices do, it would be virtually impossible to crack brute force yeah, or like andy said last week if you have a pass uh, like an alphanumeric password you might as well go watch the heat death of the universe and yeah. come back later and that's but by the way because of that uh for the last few months i've i've got a really long yeah pain in the ass to uh, enter but it's good and that that yeah. and that was more uh, about the law enforcement and and celebrating yes. all this stuff uh but it's a good thing to have the stronger the password the better in general yeah. Harder so this is there's nothing to worry about here. This no. uh, hacker fantastic has basically withdrawn his his claim. Yeah, and uh, zero day Charlie showed up to say, hey, hey, maybe all you magazines shouldn't just look at a tweet and write a whole article on it, but actually ask the researcher <laughs> yeah, exactly. or call Apple yeah. first. Is really is all those stories came from people just seeing a tweet? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think like really journalists should be. Journalists should be banned from Twitter. I see far too more, too many stories that basically come from a tweet. I think we could. Well, like, yeah, I mean, just like you can, t like I, anytime there's black hat is about to come up, it feels like they read through all the abstracts and then just post a bunch of stories right. based on that. And the thing is, like, and because there's almost nothing that gets your attention, like panic. Like if you tell someone a house is on fire, people pay a lot of attention, yeah. Yeah. but that ends up being the exploit. The exploit is your article, not. Thing to do with the You're bits right. or bytes. Right. I mean, this is, I think this is for the most part press everywhere uh, today. Is that there's such we, an urgency such, to get the story, you don't want to be right. the last one to cover it. A desperation for attention. Well, yeah. and anything anything that, that, sizz, that, that sizzles at all is going to get you a bunch of views, it's going to get you more advertising dollars. Even it's if it's not true. And exactly. Unfortunately, I think there are some publications that don't really care about the, the you know, it's the TMZ style of reporting. It's not about the veracity, oh, yeah, it's like about the time. traffic. Like it's, time. It's more, I think <laughs> like it's time more, magazine. Like yeah, Newsweek. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Newsweek's a better example. Yeah. I think it's more like the the, the cable news type of uh, right. you know, of newscasting. And, uh, not that they people want to <laughs> are, are are happy about 
reporting on a story where they don't have the facts. But if they don't, if they have to keep people, they have to stay on the air and saying, we still have no information about the presence of that missing plane. In two minutes, we'll be talking right. to an expert in aviation who quit the industry three years ago, who will tell us why he doesn't know yeah. where the plane is either. And that's oftentimes where these things come from. I, I, I will say that uh, there was a lot of... Uh, uh, there was a lot of discussion when uh, <laughs> there's there's a lot of discussion when when uh, there when uh, I'm sorry I got <laughs> I, I got distracted by a bright shiny object uh, the, 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 the Greyke uh, when when Greyke said that hey don't worry about Apple's uh, coming up coming up with this this way right. to make it harder don't worry not only have we already tested our box against it and it works but we've also put in future proofing features that make sure that Apple really can't do that that led to a lot of speculation within the profession about what they could possibly be talking about or if they're just sort of blowing smoke so that they don't lose contracts. Uh, and right now, the people who I have access to, and at least the stuff they're willing to tell me, they still have no idea what Grey Key could be talking about. Uh, and But they're very, very, but the people I've been talking to, they're very honest with me about saying that either they are blowing smoke or they really have discovered something that is so cool that they absolutely do not want anybody else to know right. about it. Uh, in either in either case, they think is equally pro equally possible. One of the one of the bigger problems too is like there's things like Forbes Contributor Network and there was a story that Apple was going to replace the iPhone 10 with a lower cost model and their their story was Apple cancels iPhone 10 and then last <laughs> week there was a story that Apple was Apple like Google and like other manufacturers is toying around with the idea of removing physical ports and their story was Apple is removing Lightning port from iPhone 10 which would entail you Apple going to your house and physically yanking it out of your phone. I just, <laughs> yeah. I just want you can't to slow remove down. it from my phone, Dan. It's it's in there. Yeah, but yeah, and and it's it's all these words like is and will and yeah. and and uh, like definitive. When you hear when you also see like in the in the headline definitive phrases uh, like breaking story or proof positive like well then you read it say confirmed. no they talked to a guy yeah exactly that was, what, that was what i was looking for confirmed apple apple restoring a uh, headphone jack to the new iphone saying <laughs> you mean that you have actually held in your hand a shrink wrap box unwrap the box and seen that there's a no you talked to an analyst that you talked to once before who says that here yeah that's ridiculous there was a story though, Leo, too, over the weekend about the keyboards. Yes, the this isn't link bait. <laughs> this isn't link bait. This headline: Apple no. admits its computers are broken. Yeah. No, don't read that article. Read mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is Casey Johnston on the. Uh, I love the outline. Casey Johnston, but the outline has just the most. Please look at me headline. I bet you Casey didn't write that headline. I don't know why I'm thinking was, about it. They it did Josh announce a, a repair program. For the butterfly keyboards, though, right? This is something uh, you've wanted. So yeah, so it's it's very specific. It is not um, it's not a recall, so you can't just take your MacBook and have the keyboard replaced. It's not a replacement program, so that all the keyboards are replaced. It's a service program, so that if you exhibit one of the specified issues, they will replace it for you for free, either the entire keyboard or the key cap, either today or for the next four years of, from the date in which you purchased. And it. if you had repairs, they'll refund yes. you. Which is great. Yeah. So yeah. what are the specific issues that they will be fixing? A stuck keys, non-responsive keys, repetitive keys, anything that basically affects the reliability of entering, of tapping that button and making that character appear on the screen. So you have to have the problem. It's not yes. a recall. You have to have the problem and then they'll fix it. But you've had that and problem on, like on how many laptops? One out of one out of eight now. Okay. I have I've had the MacBook, uh, and this goes back to the original MacBook when they first started using the butterfly key, yeah. and all the MacBook Pros with the butterfly keys one and two. And are these only the butterfly keys? Because we have problems yeah. with these. With the, I have the problems chiclets. with the scissor keys too. Yeah, so yeah. I've had I've had the chiclet replaced as well. So, yeah. but, there, but this but, is this this particular repair program is for the butterfly keys though, mm -hmm. and yeah. it doesn't count water damage or anything else. It's only for failure right. of the mechanism due to dust faulty, or some other faulty yeah. keyboard. It has to be a yeah. faulty but, keyboard, and they also say they may replace one key or all of the yes. keys. They don't, which is a change because previously they would always do the entire case, which yeah. is why it was so expensive. Yeah. But but that is significant. Uh, like Renee says, this, this isn't. There, uh, Apple sometimes has uh, policies where if you bring if you were to bring in uh, a, an iPad 
for just because oh well like i forgot my passcode how do i get around? how could I, how do i like read whatever and then oh well, they, they, and they scan it so they realize that oh well your 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 device has a has an alert for us saying that we will we will swap it out for a new battery because we've determined that there's a problem that we need to proactively fix this isn't that uh, but the the fact that they are saying that for now from now on the essentially the the keyboard is is the keyboard within any reliable uh determination of something the user did not do that caused the keyboard to fail the we're now extending the warranty by four years they wouldn't have done that if they didn't see a hugely alarming amount of repair problems that were coming in about it and or it wasn't becoming such a flagrant pain in the butt for pr that they had to do something about it and this is this is really all i this is really all i ever wanted i think that it's it's okay if apple doesn't recall that that would be saying that the keyboard was de was fundamentally defective which i disagree which is a termination i don't i disagree with but the just tell me that uh, if there is if it's provable that a lot of that more people than normal a hugely number level of more people are having problems with this keyboard all you got to do is I'll, I'll i'll it's okay with me if 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 i lose my keyboard for three or four days so long as it's not going to cost me nine hundred dollars because <laughs> one year and three days later suddenly i have no vowels on my keyboard that doesn't seem like uh, a device that earns the apple seal of quality in design approval and I, I did talk to a bunch of people in a bunch of different departments. And I, I do think it is, it is a lot of it is what happens in Apple is it's a big company. It has procedures and all these procedures get followed. And sometimes it doesn't feel like they're listening, but often it's tripped by numbers. And if they, like Apple did previously, yeah. they did a battery recall because the number of incidents exceeded what was considered tolerable for that product. And so it ought to, like, the process gets started, Apple reviews, and they say, yep. We need to do a battery fix on these. This never reached that level for keyboard. It sounds to me like the sentiment was so bad, though. Um, and that's probably why it's our service program and not a replacement program, because if it had hit a, a level where they're like, oh, these keyboards are just bad, we've got to replace them, it would have been a replacement program. But it sounded like, like it was just so toxic that they knew they had to do something. And even though the numbers weren't quite there yet, they wanted to go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. Well, there are I, I three was, class action lawsuits. Does it? Does it? You but think they're sued for everything? I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, like, it, yeah, and also, and also, if you read the lawsuits, I don't think they're going to go very far because the, the the filing makes the claim that Apple knew that these things were defective but shipped them anyway. Uh, as opposed to it seems to and, and realize that there is a legal definition of defective. That means that they should not have shipped this to begin with, as opposed to there is just a higher return rate and a higher, uh, higher problematic rate coming back with these things. I don't really think that these suits are going to go anywhere. But I think that this is direct. This is, Apple scale this is, is triggered by those suits because, it, as you say, Andy, if you can't meet the higher standard, uh, which I'm sure it'll be very difficult to meet that Apple knew, uh, uh, nevertheless, if Apple shows goodwill by saying, well, we do have a repair program, I yeah. think the judge looks at that and says, you're, you're fine. You've satisfied yeah. all the requirements. So and it's my guess they did this because of these class action lawsuits. This is the, this is the last piece they're of also, that puzzle. They, there's like also a small percentage for is still a lot of people. Like it even if it's, a, right. like if it's 1% of Apple's base, and that's a small percentage, but that's a lot of people. Yeah, so and Apple's bottom line still, like even if you go into an Apple store today, they would like to keep you as a customer. It's yeah. cheaper for them to keep you as a customer than try to go get a new customer. So if they can do this and make people very happy, then it's much better. Well, for them in fact, in the ultimately, I, that's I the real argument. It's the right thing to yeah. do for customers. Yeah. I, I do think they acknowledge that there is a much higher level of problem with this these styles do of they? keyboards than the previous ones. I Well, I, I, I have no firsthand knowledge, but... I don't think they would have done this just simply as a PR goodwill gesture. I don't think they would have done this. Uh, I don't think they would have. I, I think they would have still done this if there hadn't been that class action suit. Uh, but this does give them, a, a, again, a really, really good out. Uh, this, If it were a more serious problem, I think it would have been any time that a model keyboard uh, that with a serial, range of serial numbers comes in the Apple store, guess what? We will, we will swap out that entire plate or we will essentially clean out the entire keyboard anytime you want to come and bring it in. I, I do, I, I think that the, uh, another factor was just that this is one, uh, I can't think of uh, a, a, an Apple pro, an Apple hardware problem that was a worse thumb in the eye than, again, you've had this machine for less than two years and now keyboard keys are not working. 
uh, and you've you've had you've had MacBooks for the past uh, ten years. You have never had keyboards fail before, like three or four years before. And now Apple is telling you, whereas whereas uh, five years ago they said, oh well, we're going to replace your keyboard. There'll be two hundred three hundred dollars for the new keyboard and hundred dollars for service. And they're saying that well, because we are essentially gluing all of these together, we're going to have to charge you more than half the purchase your original purchase price for this device. That is the sort of thing that says, or I could take that thousand dollars and buy something that was not made by Apple, the, com the company that sold me an expensive machine that broke after one month after warranty in a stupid way and now I won't fix it for any reasonable amount of money. Well, and, I, and I think the hard part that Apple has also is that they released this, <laughs> they released the MacBook Pro and a lot of us said, oh, those keyboards are horrible. And then it turned out, you know, of course the the sell is, is that well, they're new and they're exp amazing, it turns out. That <laughs> you just you just haven't given it a chance yet. Wait, wait until, wait until we, we've decided exactly. so that so that like uh, English muffin crumbs are the necessary lubricant that will give you that force resistant yeah. resistance you've been missing from previous models. I mean, yeah. I, I think the problem for me is I'm still I'm still on a 2015 and I'm not in any rush to move. You know, mostly because I've, of MagSafe and the keyboard are the two. I, I, I think I think the problem is Alex that you have taste, you have class, you have standards. <laughs> so there's also a graphics card replacement for some of the models too. That's a separate program. Oh, yeah. card card. Well, and and here's that was previous. The worst news uh, that I have for today is that I was we were we we're having some trouble with playback on something, and uh, and Kevin Hansen, who's on who who is at, at Pixelcore, was he was playing something that was really smooth on his computer and not on ours, and I was like, what? That computer is different. He goes, it's a 2017. I mean, I mean, it's 17 inch. I'm sorry, it's a 17 inch. Yeah. That was smoother. Plays back video. Plays some of the stuff we were doing back better. The graphics card in the 17 inch, which is ancient, 2011 or something like that, is oh. better than the one that's that's on the computer now. That's depressing. Not that I'm bitter. Why don't you have eGPUs? <laughs> that's the Apple. Solution. That's where we're going. <laughs> I mean, there's still a discrete. There's still a discrete card in the 15 inch of the new MacBook Pros. It's just not in the 13 or the baseline. Maybe you guys yeah. just don't have the discrete card in the other ones. We turned them all on. I mean, you know, we turned on all the. You know, we we. Yeah. Yeah. Renee, what did you do uh, with the one that you had problems with? Did you bring it in and get it fixed? No, I air, I, I. Uh, you were air, able to clean it. Canned. Yeah, I cleaned it. But they, they're, Apple is not refunding all that air, though. <laughs> just sad. So <laughs> some people are able to fix these. It's not that you yeah. can't fix them. So my again, this is just a guess, but uh, Apple, uh, this part of this design was supposed to make it not just flatter, but also um, wear better, and dust is harder to get in. But if when it, it gets, gets in, in, it's almost impossible. Harder to get out. To get out. Yeah. yeah. So. That that didn't work out great. My only issue with the keyboard is just the la is the lack of travel and the way it lands, which is a little harder than I'd like. I'd like it to be a little soft. It's loud. I don't mind the it's keyboard. Clacky. But it's, loud. it's clacky. It's yeah. clacky. Yeah. Uh, that's the other thing that didn't bother me quite so much. But it, but but the the loudness. It never is a bothers the person typing. Yeah, right. Bothers the people yeah. who aren't. Typing. But it's a symptom. It's a symbol of the fact that the travel is so short and that the end is so abrupt. That's why it's clacky. Right. If they put a little cushion under there, I might not have that problem i don't know interesting to see what they do come the i fall. like the clack oh, i have a clacky keyboard. do you think they'll come do you think come the fall we'll get new macbooks uh yeah but i don't know if this if they're gonna have new new because a lot of people are waiting for their redesign right like with the yeah. uh, face id camera in it and they get delete all the bezels and it's pretty <laughs> pretty early to redesign that they yeah. just these we'll, are we'll these are new as of 2016. These new these we'll probably designs. get the new iPads and then we'll get a, a, a spec bump uh, coffee lake. Well, yeah. I'm just holding on to this 2015 I, I as long as I, I, know. Can. I know. Well, they still you know that there's a problem when they still sell it. It was flickering. <laughs> I mean, but it, they they sold the CD-ROM version of the Mac Pro right. for like 10 years yeah. after. You could argue they sell it because some businesses will only buy it with the MagSafe or there, there may be or the some, older ports. Yeah, the MagSafe, uh, the MagSafe, and, and the MagSafe. And, 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 and it's not only that, ports, but SD no, card MagSafe. Yeah. It's a, but but also re realize that they have they have the tooling they have the factory lines for this. It's easy for them to essentially build way more than they need, have them in stock, and then keep freshing them. At, excuse me, freshing them with new software. I, I wish they would refresh the processors. Then it would yeah. be fine. Yeah, I, I, so I agree. So apparently, with you. I the think processors they use, uh, Intel finally shipped them a month or two ago, and they're being integrated now, which is why I think we'll see them. Ah, in the fall. which ones remember, are those? It's not like, this so KB Lake, just, oh, Coffee in, Lake? Intel, no, uh, Coffee Lake. Intel's Coffee announced Lake? Coffee Lake. And, yeah, but Intel announces like one processor nine months before the right. rest. And right. uh, so they Apple typically waits for the multi-core ones that also have the Vega Pro graphics. Okay. Oh, the, the Iris Pro, sorry, the Iris Pro Iris graphics. Pro. Right. Um, and those apparently came out like a month or two months ago. Yeah. The exact date. Well, we knew those came out, and then there was some 
issue that they maybe weren't producing them in great enough quantity because we've seen i mean some of the some of the pc makers are shipping those or announced them uh, but they may only make 30,000 of them. Apple would need And to some of them, millions. frankly, are not reliable. Like we saw a bunch of Windows vendors rush to Skylake and those things wouldn't shut down properly in terms right. of furnaces and your bags. And I think Apple has learned to very, very carefully test these at very large quantities before rolling them out. Well, and I think that one of the things that, I mean, Apple does things at such a high precision that there is just high failure rates internally. They Usually they don't get out to us. Right. But I mean, I, I, I heard from somebody a long time ago that, that, like the when they put change to this new key the new trackpad it was like the rejection was like 40 percent you know in the factory i mean so when we think about like what their profit margins are on all these machines when you know an analyst looks at it yeah sure if you're not throwing any of them away Asus, you're not so here's the there's 17 as according to cnet as of now 17 uh laptops with these new six core i7s these new uh coffee lake six core i would love a six core mm -hmm. with and i think do these these have uh, discrete uh, graphics. Uh, is it the AMD that's paired with these? I some can't remember. Some of them, I think, some of them are the Frankenstein chips. The Frank Frankensteins. So this <laughs> yeah. is the Asus ROG, the Samsung Odyssey Seven, or I'm sorry, Z. There's several of those. The MSI GT series. So far, the, of of these, only the Asus is available at Amazon right now. Alienware. The a lot of so it's a lot of gaming machines. The Dell G315 is available at Dell right now. Um, quad core, though, not 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 hex core. Yeah, and when Apple gets them, they also do a ton of customization work with Intel, where they do everything right. like Power Nap, and they they deeply integrate. And the T the T chip on some lap, like the MacBook Pros, has to take over the the Apple Pay and the display of Apple Pay graphics, but it has to work with the main system to do that, and it's it's a little bit of work. Let me just quickly see. I think I can configure. This is one of my favorite PC laptops. If they would only run Mac software, I'd be. If I could just get okay, Mac OS credit. on yeah. uh, on one of these, let me see if I can uh, configure this uh, with the Hexacore processors. I bet I can. I do like Dell though because it, I still have uh, I still have Lenovo and I forget the other company. Oh, and Optane. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. Optane's the, the other thing from. I would really like. I'd love to get a. Uh, i9 with Optane. That's the new memory, the new the new 3D memory, the crossover, a cross point memory, and uh, and SSD. I mean, people are still going to be upset because they still don't even Coffee Lake, as far as I know, doesn't support more than 16 gigabytes of low uh, low power RAM. Is that true? Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah. yeah. Intel has been Intel is not having a good year lately. <laughs> Intel is not going to have a good decade. I'm I'm no. feeling. I'm feeling that the time has come. The time has come. Great article by Ben Thompson and Stratechery about yeah. really why Intel is struggling. Of course, they just ben had Beharin to had a good one replace too. their CEO. Yeah, Ben. It, he quotes Ben Beharin in it. Yeah. Um, uh, I think Intel's going to have some trouble going forward. It's hard. They, 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 have, they, they have they have somewhat uh, they have some of an Atlas problem where their processors are, are holding up eighty percent of the computers in the world, which means that as much as they might want to do something revolutionary, as much as they might want to to make a huge huge sweeping change and maybe eat it for a couple of years while they do the transition, there are too many suppliers that are giving them way too much money for making these really successful chips. It's really hard for them to have the same influence over their product line as Apple Apple can have over the CPUs that are in the iOS devices. Ben, ben Anosky ben had Tom's a great thread. Did you see that one, Leo? Because um, he had to deal with them when he ran Windows. Right. And he was saying that almost all the time they were talking about how they could screw over AMD, not how they could make good products. And he always yeah. thought that that would bite them in the end. You, you just can't run a company that way. Ben, Ben's uh, point is a little bit uh, more nuanced, but he says Intel really boxed themselves in because one of the reasons for their success early on was tight integration with Windows, right. with the operating system. But he says Intel ended up being hemmed in by its integrated approach. That's why they missed mobile. It's why they missed graphics, right? Their Larrabee yeah. uh, architecture uh, was an x86 graphics chip, and it didn't. It failed compared to NVIDIA yep. and AMD. Uh, and now their current crisis is that a number of uh, fabs are down to 7 nanometers. Intel can't seem to get yep. down that side. And then the Ryzen processors, the new, pro new multi-core processors from AMD, are actually pretty good. Intel's management, writes Ben, did not break out of the integration mindset. Design and manufacturing were assumed to be in lockstep forever. 
and ultimately that's some that's a box that they're going to have a very hard time breaking out of and it's and it's why you know but but it's a cautionary tale for apple because apple wants to do the same thing but it's also why apple's designed chips do so so much a better job they're integ they're tightly integrated to the os well and you, and you have things like uh, apple pushing for metal which is a good example right. of you know it wants to make sure that it works really well across all the platforms and so it's written code that optimizes for that and then it's going to build processors that optimize you know and they're working and they're working with um you know they're, they're i think amd is going to build metal, gonna, or has already built metal support it but right. sanofsky's thing was interesting because he was saying that whenever they talked to them they were not talking about how to better support windows they were talking about how to make n unnecessary features that were exclusive to intel that amt couldn't offer like just for yeah. optical reasons and that led them to and they didn't care about graphics they thought the cpu would be fast enough that they'd never have to worry about graphics. Meanwhile, the other companies were investing heavily in graphics. Yeah, it, two different it takes. Look like, Probably both yeah. accurate. Uh, you know, I'm not. They're not mutually exclusive. No, it, totally. Intel really was. Uh, you know, said x86. That's it. We're gonna. We're we're all in on x86, and that ultimately didn't didn't That's scale. That's when they saw that AMD 64 code. Yeah. And I think that, that every day. I think they're. I think that they're, they're also just really challenged to try to keep up with Moore's law. I mean, they just. You know, at some point they aren't able to and they just had so many delays i mean that i think is uh, the delays i think are a big reason that apple is probably going to go down its own path as usual uh, the last paragraph in ben's articles are always the ones to pay yeah. attention to man it, it, basically he's saying th this this is what makes disruption so devastating absent a crisis it's almost impossible to avoid disruption managers are paid to leverage their advantages not destroy them to increase margins not to obliterate them Culture is an organization's greatest asset right up yep. until it becomes its curse. And he says that's what's happened at Intel. And that may well be. But it does, you know, that's, I think, why when you, when Apple and Microsoft both say ARM processors, uh, in, in Microsoft's case designed by other companies, in Apple's case designed by internally, the, are the future for our desktop systems. Boy, that's a bad, that's bad news for Intel. Yeah. It, it, it points to how we're just changing the definition of what a desktop computer is, that we're going back to a distributed model where so, where so much of the processing power of the apps that we use is actually being done by a server, whether we're in an office environment or not. So this is not something that anybody could have bet on five years right. uh, five years out. So It is a cautionary tale for Apple, though, because Apple could potentially have the same problem. Any company that's massively successful mm -hmm. with a single product can have a problem. Apple has been good so far. Like the old saying is that you never want to mistake your product for your business, which is what right. did Steve Ballmer in because everything had to be Windows. Right. It didn't have to be software. And Apple was like, we're not an i we're not a Mac company, we're not an iPod company, we're not even an iPhone company. If we can make something that kills them, let's us be the one that killed them. And and look what they've done with services over the last few years. That's clearly yep. going to be a big growth growth center for Apple. Apple, Apple News. I mean, yeah. uh, they haven't integrated texture yet, but they're just launching their um, election hub where they, they're right. like, AI is not the complete answer. You have to have AI balanced by humans because right. the okay. AI is going to feed you good junk food and yeah. the humans have to make sure you get your vegetables. That's Although actually I, one of our stories. But, the news app is going to have a midterms election tab. Which I think is really dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You think for, so? for Apple to take a handful of editors and say we're going to now feed you what you what you want about an election puts them squarely in the oh boy in the uh, I mean I, I just think that that is so I know it's really it's dangerous. Curated, it's curated AI, so the AI pulls out a lot of stuff that interests you, and then I the editors it. try to service but um, having, having spotlight issues. Having human editors uh, picking political news that is going being distributed is a very very dangerous thing to do like well, okay, well, i like we, i wouldn't are, touch that with a 10 we, foot pole yeah. we are we already have that happening at the new york times the boston globe at the san jose mercury news that's that's basically what newspapers are all about um, i think we're we're giving people consumers of journalism choose choices between different products uh, i think that uh, it's google's method is reassuring because it says look this is not being touched by human hands we are not trying to influence you by by, by any mm -hmm. human beings here saying that we want to make sure that if someone if, if there's a really really popular trending article on uh, on why on how horrible it is to separate immigrant children from their uh, and from their parents we got to make sure that we have we Prom we, we post just as prominently a counter argument saying, oh, well, this is just what people deserve. Uh, they can fall back on saying, look, we are ha we have algorithms that simply say that uh, might be flawed in their own way, but there is no one's personal agenda trying to go in your way. Apple's, uh, Apple's way of having some curation 
you can't uh, a uh, machine learning is the product of human learning once removed so you can't you can't avoid some kind of bias and sometimes it really you really do need somebody uh, at the end of that assembly line to make sure that there are no like nail filings inside the twinkies <laughs> before they get wrapped in ship I, and that's what's been happening with news a lot i do have to say that Tell me if it's just me, because I'm looking at the new Apple News. This is part mm -hmm. of iOS 12. Yeah. In the For You section, they apparently think I am interested in the Dugers, in a breastfeeding mom, a teen's murder. This is all crap that I don't want to see in For You. And then another thing that bothers me is these giant banner ads, which Apple apparently can't sell because they're all uh, for animal shelter, an animal shelter right now. But uh, are these going to end up being... so? Two problems I see right now, and maybe this is just because it's the beta. This is the new browse section on the side on the iPad. Uh, is that this is not for me? This is absolutely yeah. not for me. And is Apple going to start selling giant banner ads into this? And if they are, how are they going to sell it without tracking my usage? That's so how they, you sell this. They stuff. have a they have a policy. So they've been doing those ads, I think, for two a year or two years. They made them available, and it, it's similar to the, there's. You can go read their privacy statement. They do some level of tracking for it, and it persists for a certain amount of time. I forget the details because Apple. It's not competitive if they can't meet Google and Facebook's offers of information about what people are buying. Nobody's going to buy an ad in Apple News if they can buy it in Facebook and Google. Unless they can show volume. Because uh, there is this merit, it's not, I don't want to call it meritorious. There is this model of brand advertising that a lot of podcast ads use where they, you know, they, they give up on some tracking because they know that, yeah. like, like the classic example is like web companies. They may know you don't need a website today, but they want you to remember their name when you do need a website. And Samsung is famous for this. They wallpaper airports because they know you're not buying a phone today, but when you walk into the carrier, they want Samsung to be the only so, name. So that's who buys network television because you can't really. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Brand and Apple is doing, they are doing tracking. Like they have disclosed that it's in their privacy page. I forget the details, but they will do. But I think it's like location based. It'll only serve you ads based on your location and not, not very deep stuff. Be interesting um, to we watch. Can check and obviously, yeah. uh, at least in the beta, all they're selling is public service announcements. They're not selling those. Those are being given. When did away, you put I'm the sure. beta on that device, Leo? Was uh, it today? Yeah, or yes, last night, yeah. So it might take a while to actually, if you maybe go through and start liking ads, maybe it'll it start understanding, them. not ads, I, sorry, liking articles, it'll start understanding well, your taste. So you think it's not it. using the information it got previously? No, they I were very good at walling. See, I don't know how much it translates. They wall news off from other stuff, it, though, no, so it might no, have to rebuild. because it, it knows what I'm following. It has okay. the, fo the following information from my previous setup. Uh, it it may not be working yet. Yeah, it may not be working yet. It's pretty bad. It was why I stopped using it in the first place because I was getting a lot of crap in there. Maybe well, there was that thing at the keynote where Craig goes, and you have the section for you. Then he looks at one of the articles and goes, not, not really for me. And then he keeps going. Well, and the problem is uh, I'm probably exacerbating it because I'm getting this gossip in here. And so I'm clicking on it. And then it goes, yes. see, we did pick the right thing for you. But yeah. I don't really want to. I mean, of the, of, of the articles it's suggesting for me, four of them are from People Magazine, which I don't ever read and is not in my list of followed so sources. So if you like some articles you do like, you do actually want to see more of it should start kicking in. Yeah, I don't really want to read about the science behind happy relationships from Time Magazine. Seven paid iPhone apps on sale for free right now. Probably won't read that. Russian pop star who arranged Trump Tower meeting makes music. Not interested. You can probably, un you can probably hate them. I don't forget what they I wish I could hate like them. them. If I, I could thumbs down like stuff, I would. <laughs> But, you know, I have to open it to do either of those. I have this other pet peeve is that they're, they're inconsistent with what, like, there's a heart icon, a bookmark oh, icon, yeah, there is a, a star icon. There is an unhearted. And they mean like, they, yeah. mean book, uh, they mean different things in different Apple apps. And Unfortunately, you have to unheart it. It's not even, it's not even consistent with iTunes, which is annoying. Yes. Uh, with iTunes and Apple Music, which annoys the hell out of me. But, but what annoys me, uh, one other thing that annoys me is that they've decided to express the Apple News app uh, in, the, in the beta of, uh, of, of the new Mac OS as a translated version of the iOS app, which A, is problematic because it feels like an iOS app that's been ported to Macintosh as opposed to a Mac app. But secondly, that is, a news app is the absolute gold standard for why are you even bothering to produce a desktop app at all? Why, are you, why, aren't, you, <laughs> right. why aren't you doing this as a web page? Because right. 
again, the because the, the Mac has uh, uh, worldwide about 9% of desktops in, in the world, it's not foolish to think that someone has a Windows machine but an iPhone uh, or has an iPad in addition to whatever it is they're using. And it really does diminish the reach of Apple News, which is uh, continues to be a developing and very exciting news product by limiting it to, once again, you have to own something with an Apple logo on it in order to get your news from us. That's kind of silly. And you have to live in one of the three original launch countries because even though Apple yeah. could put Apple Music in 115 countries at launch, Google can put news in 127 countries, and Microsoft can put it in so many countries it can't count them all. We've still yeah. only got four <laughs> years later, three countries for Apple News. It's, it's, it's a much better. bigger problem. I, I think they'd have a, an even bigger problem like launching it in Turkey, say, and, <laughs> and other countries. I, it's there, there are a lot of dimensions to this problem. I'm kind of surprised that they haven't done some kind of playlist thing with with news my whole thing is is that i articles that are longer than a little bit i won't read the whole thing because oh, it's too many words and so <laughs> uh the uh i just want them to read them to me and so I, I go through like a little bit of a jumping jack thing to create audio files out of everybody's articles so i can listen to them while i'm working i can't believe you just can't say okay i, I want these 10 read articles yeah. read them to me they used to do you that, know there's a, there's that app i saw dub dub the guy made an app that's what i was talking about where he went off to the island and then made an workflow. app to read to his kids yeah now he's workflowed it Workflow. No, I use workflow for it, but I'm just saying I can't believe it's just not built into news where I just want to, like, let me just stack up a whole bunch of these I things. I bet you, with serious then, suggestions, you could create a workflow. I'm going to work on just it. say, you know, hey, Shlomo, read me my top 10 stories. Well, I don't, yeah, what Wouldn't I want Wouldn't that be though, awesome? I just want to be able to select them for a listen. Oh, I see. Like, I want to go through the news I and just see. go, you listen, listen, select listen, them by listen, hand. listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Here's then that, I could get back I'll to get my NPR app, my old NPR app without NPR, is I could just select the things. Um, I'll get list. the name for you, but there was that app at DubDub where you, you basically just starts reading your Safari reading list to you. So you just, you just yeah, say, I want, like, yeah, like, I, save I, the I don't know what that app is, but I would love it. Yeah, you just add your reading, add it to your reading list. Yeah. We'll find it before the I would also time. love news. Like, it took forever to come to the Mac. It's still not on Apple TV. Just give me all the videos from the news app and news for Apple TV. Just put it, make it a system-level service. I think like I just photos. Don't, I think my problem Everywhere. for news is I really like news to be there. I don't like to monotask news. So I, I like to multitask news. So I, I like to listen to news while I'm doing something else. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not really willing to spend a lot of dedicated time on it. So the idea of being able to convert it to audio means I can clean my office or yeah. do whatever while I'm, while I'm absorbing information. Why is Apple's Air Power wireless charger taking so long to make? Ask Mark Gurman. Because it's hard. But is it's it hard. really hard? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's hard. I have multi-coil. No, no. I have multi-coil Chi Apple charging watch pads that can do multiple there. devices. Oh, it's if the Apple watch? If watch wasn't on there, it would be easier. It's the watch. Because the watch isn't really Chi. Uh, you can't just put it on a Chi charger. So and that's you have what's to be able to charge the watch in any of those locations and the phone in any of those locations, which is multiple different kinds Oh, I get it. Charge. Yeah, because I've had pads for years. I had a pad that had four, coi you know, four yeah. charging spots five I mean, years ago. I, I think the fundamental problem is is that Apple repeatedly is having this issue where we're going to announce something that is That's now going to take a mistake. long time. Like it just yeah. you, you might they need you know and they're Why trying are they to doing that. Well, I think that they they're also, trying to stay ahead of they're trying to stay ahead of some market segments. Like for instance, not an, not announcing uh, the speaker. Would, was going to uh, continue to cede market share to Google and right. Amazon in a decision process, you know? And um, like my kids don't, at this point, they have no idea how to talk to my speak my Apple speaker, uh, my HomePod, but they, they talk to Alexa constantly, don't they? So what kind of charging oh, is in the watch? It's not Qi charging? What it's, is it? it? It's similar. It, it has a Qi element, but it also has a magnetic element to it. You need both of those. And you also have to manage the current between an iPhone to quick charge it and something like an AirPods, which requires much less. Right. So they have to well, have they multiple, also have to make an AirPods well, case. Yes. the AirPods, As far as I know, that part is done. It's just okay. making sure that the complexity of the underlying pads will do what they're supposed to do at the amount they're supposed to do it, it. regardless of where you, it's because it shouldn't be your problem where you put it so regardless of where it you place catch it fire. That. yeah okay. and also like i think that for alex's point they wanted to they wanted to get this out but they also i think they wanted to show a multi-year commitment to chi technology because part of them coming on board was to evangelize it so that it would be in every right. starbucks and every uber and that really hasn't worked out so no. great so and to, and to, by the way, so in IRC, Synapse said, you know, this is a non-problem. Do people really need wireless charging? I, I will admit that I wish that I could plug my watch in. I use a lot of different phones. <laughs> I use a lot of different phones. And uh, I noticed that I don't use the phones that don't wirelessly charge as, as much because it's just more convenient for me to I have wireless chargers at home in my oh, home yeah. office, at, on my desk here in the studio and when my, I'm at, next to my bed. I use those easels, so it's not an issue of 
placement. It's very quick and easy. I just put it on the easel. And for me, that's a really important feature in a phone. Yeah, Maybe it's also better security. I don't think I'm like alone you, in that. If you go to a restaurant and all the stuff is cheated. You don't want to plug into USB. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to plug into an Uber if you're in a summer of the guys Uber because you don't no. know where that, yeah. like, you don't want to, like, but it, you, if you just put it down on the arm rest and it starts charging, you put it down in the Starbucks and it starts charging. That's the restaurant I, table. The well, I will agree. I won't, I won't plug into any public USB right. connection. Yeah. Right. So ever. you see the advantage Absolutely. right now. Yeah. Maybe not at home. Not at home. But as you're walking mm -hmm. around, if you could put stuff on, on tables and stuff right. and have it charge. Yep. Every bar, I don't know why yep. every bar doesn't have this. Because they don't want you staying. <laughs> yes, they do. The more you stay, the more you drink. You go in the wrong no. bars, my friend. What are you going to Denny's? Beverage. You're gonna, you're gonna. If 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 you if you knew for a fact that after a four hour bender you would be able to call an Uber and leave your car behind, <laughs> you yeah. you would make it a six hour bender. So that's a that's a good, that's a good problem. But that that's exact. I'm when I was when there was the first uh, rumblings that Apple was going to go to wireless charging. My fear was that Apple would try to quote improve unquote wireless charging by coming up with their own standard. Uh, but the, it's sometimes the most important thing is to make this as dumb as possible so that someone can afford to have a, a fifteen or twenty dollar. Uh, charging pad on their desk another one like near their sofa another one uh, in the kitchen so that no matter where they go when they set their phone down they can actually be topping off their battery at that same time so uh, they're doing a lot of new things with this new charging pad that go beyond simply being a three station charger uh, and that is that's part of what's getting this making making problems it's it's easy to get things working 90% it's very hard to get something working 100% as our earlier story about that keyboard uh, <laughs> kind of pointed out uh, so Let's see if it pays off once they actually ship it. And, and they're going to share I, it back with Chi, they said, whatever they, whatever they yeah. add ah, to this tech. Good. Did you get your, uh, have you stocked up on your modern buckles, Renee? No, because <laughs> they're for the 38 millimeter. I have the 40. Oh, they don't have modern buckles for the 42? No, I, I don't understand why, because Apple is so good about being gender inclusive. Oh, and they don't that. have the, the rate, they don't have the loop for the 38 and they don't have the modern buckle oh, for well, the 42. Apparently they're That's, discontinuing the modern buckle. Yeah. So if you didn't get one, but I didn't realize it was 38 only. Oh. I just didn't buy it because it was too damn expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I saw 149 bucks, I didn't even look at what sizes. I just like, never mind. Never mind. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Apple has ordered more series. Do we want to do the... I'm not going to do the 2019 rumors. I don't care about 2019 rumors, even if they come from Mark Gurman. It's 2019, folks. There's Forget. no such thing as the 2019. There's no such thing. There shouldn't be. Apple's ordered a series called Little America from Alan Yang, the, star, the stars of The Big Sick and The Office's Lee Eisenberg. Uh, this is actually great, of course, because uh, uh, Kumail Nanjami, Nanjami is, uh, uh, has an immigrant experience. He talks about it a lot. The Big Sick was a lot about his, his Pakistani family and how they didn't want him to mar marry an American, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, these will be stories about the immigrant uh, immigrants in America, and I think that's a great idea for a, a series. What we still don't know <laughs> is where the hell these things are going to show up. <laughs> so TV that's well, one more. Yeah. It's a long list of shows now that they've ordered. You think TV dot app? It, yep. it does seem like they're they are leaning towards you know obviously tent poles, but all, it sounds like they're all, you know and and also things that are culturally rich you know whether it's Oprah or you know she's going to Oprah's have great. This one is going to be fantastic. They're, they're, I think they're trying to do something that's more meaningful and not trying to shotgun. You know they don't or have HBO, to do less or, Netflix. Yeah. Well, also they they know that they can't win with a strategy of let's fund let's fund the next Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones costs, costs fortune to, right. to, to produce. And what if people just don't like it? Not everything is going to be a Westworld uh, or Walking spent Dead. Almost the same as Apple's entire budget just yeah. to acquire <laughs> the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. not, not to produce it, just to buy the rights to it. So Apple does have to pick and choose. We only have a, you only have a billion right. dollars to spend. Well, well, also, also, they're also they're they're they're. I think their goal right now is not to challenge Netflix or Hulu or anybody like that, but to simply make the TV app a lot more credible as a destination. Um, like I was saying last week, I think that they I I feel as though a, one a smart goal for them would be to make sure that instead of the your landing page for Apple TV being this grid of icons in which TV has 
equanimity with every single thing else. It's just the place you – Apple TV is just the remote you pick up in order to navigate to Netflix. Now when you – in the future, when you take – when you launch the Apple TV, you'll get on – you'll get into the TV app that will have here's all the exclusive stuff that we've got on Apple TV and scroll, 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 scroll. Here's Netflix. And if you want to hold down and make it jiggle and then move the Netflix app someplace else, you can do that. But – Netflix is a doorway off of this main hallway of original Apple content, so they can they can afford to spend time developing a nice portfolio. Because uh, if, if they have a five year plan, five years is a long time to acquire a really nice portfolio of at least twelve important series. And I think I think that if they, uh, with all the other advantages that they have, if they are able to um, uh, incorporate this in with the, what you're already paying for for Apple Music. I think that it becomes very competitive, you know, and, and difficult. You know, there's a lot of places there where they can, um, you know, keep on leveraging those th those two pieces together to to add a lot of bang for your buck. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I don't know uh, yet what the upshot of this is. Of course, we're in a trade war uh, with China right now. Um, uh, in the past, the White House has said it's not going to affect the iPhone uh, so, on so the. On the other hand, when you want a $250 billion in tariffs from China, uh, it almost has to and affect... And nobody can guarantee... If you're, if you're going to say anything definitive about this, then I'm just going to assume you don't know what you're talking about. Because yeah. yeah. China's not... China does not... They do what they want to do. Yeah. yeah. No way you can guarantee anything. So, I mean, this is... That's... $250 billion is half of all U.S. trade with China. But uh, so that means tariffs would affect a lot of things. Will they? Will iPhones cost more? I don't know. I, I think a lot. A lot of people were wondering, you know, why, why is Tim Cook, you know, sitting in these roundtables, you know. and why is why is he there? It's because you do not want to be left out of that conversation yeah. because that that could be, you know, that's probably worth billions of dollars to Apple to to be at least involved in the conversation. It doesn't mean he has to agree with everything, but being willing to show up at the White House and having those conversations, I think, was probably useful. If he had just ignored him and ignored all those things, I guarantee the iPhone would be on on the short list. Well, yeah. and then we should also point out that moving iPhone production to the U.S. wouldn't necessarily solve the problem either because it's components possible. are also being tariffed. Exactly. Well, even if yeah. even if they could, the components are being tariffed. Yeah. So it wouldn't necessarily solve the well, problem. Well, people help, are talking about... I would help, Leo, but I'm a national security threat, so I'm just Well, basically, I'm coming to visit you to buy my next iPhone. See? That's, if you <laughs> guys would just stop with the softwoods... Well, the irony is, is that people are talking about having to move, finish the production that, that was being done in the United States in China because because the, like, the, like the Harley Davidson's moving to Europe. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's we, not a good. It's, you know, it's a basically it's we're disruptive. We're not taking Bieber back. Un, yeah, no, I don't want Bieber. I don't want Bieber. You can have him back. That's a good deal. That's a fair trade. We're keeping Shatner. <laughs> we're keeping Shatner. You can keep <laughs> <Tough> Bieber. <guy. laughs> Uh, I, I, there's not much to say about that except that you know we'll continue to watch with interest because it could very well affect uh, Apple's business dramatically. Uh, just it's unknown. And, which ultimately will affect everybody. We tend to we tend to forget how this it affects everybody. Down to it affects us. everybody, yeah. and it may right. not happen at all because uh, well, you know they may it's, resolve I, the problem. I, 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 there was this Again, old we, there was this old thing saying you never want you never like I forget I think it was China in the China Strait you just never want two ships to come close together because someone might accidentally fire it doesn't matter if they don't right. this time but at some right. point it'll happen so you just don't want these situations happening because at some point someone intentionally or not will slip on a trigger and then everybody is at war so just keep away from all this stuff mm. sorry. Uh, just, say, we, yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you, know, you, you thought it'd be funny 11 years ago to steal that z shoplift that Zagnut go bar from the seven from the Seven <laughs> Eleven. Now that's your that's your ability to do business in the United States, my friend. <laughs> hey, but, uh, you said TV dot app with such confidence earlier oh, yeah. when we were talking about con uh, content. Renee, have, have you learned something that we should know? No, I, I think I think Apple is just busy. Like I think if you, a lot of stuff with Apple, um, you know, like there there are rumors, of course, and you hear things. But if you follow the the short arc of their history, they do very rational, very sensible things. Often, when you look back in hindsight, you go, yeah, you know, that was the best option for them to take. So I think a lot of times, if you just look at what they can do with things, they will choose the most sensible thing to do with it. And they, I don't think they spent all this time building up TV dot app and putting all the content and getting it all there to then try to hide um, Apple Media projects in some other area. I agree. I will, I, agree. I, I, I will just say that, that Disney has its own app, you know, coming out. It's its own I streaming know. service that's coming out in 2019, <laughs> which perfectly packages it up to be bought by Apple. Mm -hmm. And then they just take that app the and Star put it inside Wars show, the TV the app. And then show. just, mm. we're done. 
they'll never, they'll, yeah, but DC, never see, this is it though. DC they, has a, a streaming thing coming out and W everyone is going to have a streaming. Apple is going to have a magazine subscription, TV subscription and music subscription. I want my bundles back. See, Apple's I, I'm over only, this era. Well, Apple's the, the only company that could, that could buy a company that would give them Marvel, Star Wars, uh, Nat Geo, you know, like, like Muppets. the gamut of all the things that make sense for Apple would all be, is, is all encased in one company. And you just kind I of, and then if they buy Lego, I, they will own my entire childhood. I do admire Apple's, <laughs> Uh, I think intelligent decision not to try to swallow giant companies because of the culture shock. I, I think that's really what's going on. Exactly, and, and also the 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 media consolidation is going to affect Apple and every other company. That this is this is why Apple developing its own content is almost not only a smart move, it's almost a survival mood move because whatever yeah. deal you make with whatever existing company because you want to have access to their content library, they could be bought by another another company soon that will simply say, we are no longer going to be offering this. The, the cable companies have an obligation to make sure that, I'm sorry, cable channels have an obligation to make their content available to other cable operators, even if they're owned themselves by a cable company, but those restrictions do not apply to streaming. So it would be possible for Disney, once they feel as though they have a good enough library of content to simply say, guess what? No Disney or Disney affiliated product service property will ever be available on any other streaming service except for this new Disney service that yep. we're opening right now. And so now, guess what? Nobody has a, unless uh, unless Apple wants to buy Sony's content and no one has bought Sony yet. Uh, Apple could be left with we've got to we've got to have our own Game of Thrones. We have to produce our own movies. Uh, not just because we want to have something that's unique to us, but because we want to have content. Period. I think there's no company that I, I know it's a huge thing, and I know it doesn't it doesn't make any sense from the size perspective. But there is no company with content that is more that, that makes more sense for Apple than than Disney. The rest of them, so when you look at all the other options they throw out there, you're like, Wah. but that's been true for a while. And the fact that Apple hasn't bought them yet kind of tells me they, not it, 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 they would have to restructure their they would have to do like an alphabet style restructuring of their company in order to buy a company like disney because it just that does, i don't think that company could possibly function as a vice presidency under tim cook or under any un, could, under any apple ceo could Apple could alex run it could apple just buy it and let alex run it yeah, oh, right. That's a solution. Now there is an like idea. Like FileMaker, <laughs> FileMaker, but Disney and Alex can run it. <laughs> Let's take a break. Your picks, gentlemen, fire them up. They're coming up next. Meanwhile, I'm glad we've got our molecule fired up here in the studio. Molecule is a miracle for us. Anybody with allergies, anybody who's been sneezing, asthma, the Molecule is a new, a breakthrough, really, uh, air filtration system. It's capable of destroying air pollutants at the molecular level, hence the name M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E. -E. It was replacing something that's essentially 50 years old, the HEPA filter. Actually, more than 50 years old. Uh, people have been using HEPA filters since the 40s, but it, but it doesn't do the job you want. The HEPA filter cannot capture and eliminate allergens, mold, bacteria, viruses, even airborne chemicals. Only Molecule's PICO technology can. It's the photoelectrochemical oxidation, P-E-C-O. And it includes pollutants 1,000 times smaller than those a HEPA filter can catch. Uh, funded by the EPA, uh, tested by people like me and who love it, and verified by third parties in university labs like the University of South Florida's Center for Biological Defense and the University of Minnesota's Particle Calibration Laboratory. Molecule makes it easier to cope with asthma and allergies, significantly reduces symptoms, kills odors. We have a molecule in the studio. We we put one in here because uh, after the fires with all the smoke and then the people all do tar on the roof and then people painting and pretty soon, it, you know, but it smells good in here, right? And we got the molecule at home. I got one for Lisa because she has allergies and she stopped, it, it changed her life. She stopped waking up with headaches. It's also beautiful. It's like the apple of air purifiers, a sleek aluminum shell. It, uh, it, you can uh, use it manually, of course, if you don't want to connect it to the internet. But if you do connect it to the internet, it will automatically order filters for you when you need them, which I really like. Uh, but you don't have to. Uh, some people don't want to have another IoT device. It doesn't have to. Be. It's not required at all. If it's got a button right on the top, you can turn it on. You can run it in silent mode. That's how we run it here in the studio. You can run it maximized boost mode that it clears out smoke and gas and odors and even stuff you can't see almost instantaneously. It really is an amazing solution. 
If you're looking for an air filtration system that actually works, Molecule, you can get $75 off your first order if you go to M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E dot -E com and use the promo code MACBREAK. They have literally reinvented the air purifier. It, does, it destroys, destroys impurities in the air. I love it. Molecule.com, M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E dot -E com. And don't forget that offer code MACBREAK because you'll save 75 bucks, and then they'll know you heard about it here on MacBreak, so it helps support the show. Thank you. Molecule.com. And they do have a money-back guarantee if you're at all nervous about it. But I have to say, uh, we like it so much we have three now. So I'm, <laughs> I'm a believer. We have one in Michael's room, we have one in our bedroom, and then we have one here in the studio. Renee Ritchie, pick of the week, my friend. So the, the app that wouldn't die, Pokemon Go, Leo, I'm going back to that again. <laughs> They've put out another big update, and they've had another huge wave oh, of engagement. Man, you're so now you suck have me in again. you have friendship. So you can make friends with people, <laughs> and then they will send you gifts. You can Ooh. send them gifts. I'm going to open Ooh. a gift right now. Can I be friends with you, or does it have to be somebody totally. nearby? No, it, you you can be totally be friends with me. Uh -huh. uh, you open it up. I have to manage items now because I have too many things. I'll quickly delete something. Yay! Um, you haven't you can bought the other. giant backpack yet. I did, and I'm still out of it. So you, it'll give you a bunch of stuff, and it'll even give you eggs for Alolan Pokemon, which are essentially the Hawaiian Pokemon versions. Uh, so they have, like, different types. Uh, and also you can do trading now. So if I have a Pokemon you want, you have a Pokemon I want, as long as we're close enough together, we can trade those. And the further apart we caught them, the more we get for trading them. Uh, so there's oh, and there's and so the, gift, sorry, the new mechanics are friendship, gifting, and trading. And it's it's a lot of fun. They said they want to really increase the social. They want to make it the most social game ever, which you know is just typical hyperbole. hyperbole. But they're really executing on a bunch of interesting features, and they give you more stuff to do. Uh, and the greater your friendship level, the greater bonuses you get in attacking gyms or doing raids together. Uh, it's 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 been a lot of fun, and I'm I'm actually playing a lot more again. <sighs> I know. They keep sucking me in. So what I'm waiting for, though, is there's rumors are going to do a player versus player mode. And I figured what better way to do that than AR Kit 2 with multiplayer so you're all sharing the same view as your Pokemon are battling. And that would be a pretty, really good tech demo for AR Kit 2. Oh, I hope I catch this. Oh, I hope I catch this. You can do this. it, Leo. Oh, that damn oh. Roselia broke free. Oh, I love that Rose. I want that Roselia. be my... First catch of the day and a brand new Pokemon too. I'm gonna to get all sorts of extra bonus points. Yeah, and you if I, it. but she's tough. You could use you could use a Great Ball or an Ultra. Should ball, I use know? a little uh, Raspberry on her? Yeah, use yeah, a Raspberry. Yeah, use a Raspberry. Slow her down. Now she loves me. I don't want. I don't like to use those fancy balls. There, I think I got her that time. You might have. <laughs> you might have. So where's the friend stuff? Because I'd like to. So I could trade. I could. Because you're far away. Yeah, it'd be so, good. Oh, totally. Right? So if you go to. Um, I'll, I'll put up oh, mine. Look at that, 1,100 experience points, buddy. If you tap on oh. add friend, it gives you a unique number. That's mine. So anybody who types that number into oh, their oh, 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 into their Pokemon can can oh, ask to be oh, my friend. Oh, okay. oh, you have wait. a right to refuse. Wait a minute. Wait a minute so wait a minute. where do I do that in the in this in the? Add you go friends. to your, your friends. Avatar? Oh, I see. I don't. I oh, I don't have any friends. You're gonna be my first. Let awesome. Me, okay. Wait a minute. Nine five six zero nine zero eight one. 7039. There you Which, go. Okay, I just sent you a request, Renee. Okay. I will approve it as soon as I get and it. It's, and it said your name. And mine is 3068 5802 And I'll approve anybody. Go ahead, show that so everybody could see it. I want to show it on the screen. There you go. Be my buddy. You do have a limit of 200 friends. <laughs> and the interesting thing is they introduced this over the weekend. They started with level 40 players and they went slowly down. Now you have to be level 10 or above. But their servers were crashing again. There were so many people coming back to play oh, that it was taking, which is basically Google's engine, taking down all the servers again. You could be my first friend. Awesome. As soon as I get it, I will approve it. Oh, but, but wait a minute. Show it again and I'll be your friend what, too. What team are you? <laughs> uh, are you Valor? Uh, yeah, I am Valor. All right. Voila! 
<laughs> oh, God, this is, twit, this is just, this is just <laughs> like being on the play, playground with like regular Pokemon kids. You have the one kid it's comes totally. back on vacation with this big pile of, hey, can, can I play with your Pokemon cards? <laughs> I'm going to send you a gift, Leo. Oh, he's going to send me a gift. You and Renee Ritchie are now friends. I'm the only cry. thing that's terrible is they don't give you a way to search through your friends. So you got to scroll through them like some sort of monster. Oh, and I'm time. starting to get new friend requests. I might be the most popular Pokemoner ever. You might. Yeah, four people have sent me requests. Except oh. Shaken Puma. Except Cal Morgan. Except Liari. Except Double Dare. Those are all people watching live. Look at that. I have friends everywhere. Wait a and minute. Now tap on that. Yeah, there you go. Renee sent me a gift. <gasps> Open it up. Wow, Renee, you look powerful. You look like a very <laughs> powerful I'm Pokemon playing a little bit. player. Yeah. From the Jardin de Richemont. Yes. Mmm, King's Rock. I don't know. Oh, the, you got an evolution item. Hyper, you can use that to evolve. Ooh, and an egg. This is good That's, stuff. You got an Alolan egg too. So you walk that seven kilometers. You get one of those fancy Hawaiian Pokemon. Oh, I'll do seven kilometers in my sleep. There you go. Look at you. You've won 6,130. You've walked almost 3,000 kilometers. <laughs> you know, it started me because these Jeez 7K Louise. eggs were new. I, I, I ended up walking... I think an hour and a half two days ago and an hour yesterday and wow. I want to hatch all the new eggs. That's what I love this motivation. Renee has caught 44,525 Pokemon. <laughs> been a busy two years. And he's got his own ho -Oh. Nice. Yeah. Shiny. Shiny ho -Oh. oh. Which one are you? Are you are you one of these, uh, Karsten? No, I, you, you, I only got half your code. Oh, let me show you my code again. Yeah, show me your code. Everybody should know my code. How do I do that again? Just click uh, the go to your yeah, add friend button. The add, add friend. friend. Right there, you go. there you are. Three zero six eight five eight zero two double zero seven nine. I'm sorry, we're slowing the show down. No, this is the show, man. <laughs> All right, I sent you a friend. Alex right. Lindsay, you must have a pick of the week for us. So I've had this issue. I have a lot of issues, but I have a specific issue, which is that I shoot stuff with my in portrait mode on my phone, yes. but I can't edit it on my computer you can't you don't have the full control of like changing all the depth of field and playing around with it and noodling because with it. vertical video should be banned from the world no no no, no. i'm just taking portrait oh not, portrait stills stills you know like the portrait mode and you not, can't edit them not there's not a lot of tools to do it very well so yeah. i've been playing with this anamorphic pro which is does that oh. so basically it takes in you can basically export um your uh, heic uh file so you save that out as a as a as an original, and then you bring it in here, and it grabs onto that depth map, and now you can do all the things that you do with something like Focus, you know, which is that you can um, actually uh, you know adjust the the depth of field and play with it. Um, you can also it has a lot of like uh, you can play with brightness and exposure, and it has some presettings, and you can sharpen things in the foreground, and you know, there's a lot of other things that you can do with it. But it's um it's a slick little app. It's you know not very expensive. I think it's like thirty bucks or something like that. But it lets you if 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 you've been if if it's something that you want to be able to do on your computer. Ooh, that's neat. After you you know you can of course do this in something like Focus, but sometimes you you ha have your computer open and you want to do it there. <laughs> now I'm I'm kind of surprised you can't have all of these both Focus's control as well as this control in photo uh, or in photos. But but since you can't. Um, if, if this is something you feel is missing for you, this is the right app. So anyway, it's, it's a cool And if you don't know what Alex just said, it's not for you. It's not for you. If you're not worried about oh. changing your depth of field based on I don't know if this would mode. help you, Alex, but in iOS 12, as along with the depth data, they'll now also give you their segmentation map as an API. As an API. But I'm just saying, if, yeah. if, you, have, if you want an app that, that lets you... Uh, if you want an app that, that lets you do the things that you want to do... Um, but you being you what? could now access. But you being you could I now know, access the segmentation I, mat as well and do all your Alex things with it. I'm, I'm, the thought has crossed my mind. But I'm just <laughs> saying that, the, 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 that this is the app that does it now. Awesome. I just got ten more friends. I don't have any friends. I now have fifteen friends. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Andy Anako, pick of the week. I don't need friends. I'll, I got my books, and because I'm home on Friday and Saturday night and Sunday night and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I can read, 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 read with my friends in the Elfin Kingdom. Aren't you jealous? Babar. Um, 
<laughs> him too. Uh, there's a uh, I there's a, there, sometimes there's an app that I've been using for a while, but have been forgetting to recommend because I figure that everyone else knows about it. Uh, if a lot of people are not aware that their local public library will let you borrow eBooks and audiobooks, and furthermore, you don't have to like go to the library because these are electrons that can be sent to you over the information superhighway. And there and because libraries are absolutely awesome in every way, shape, or form, they really want people if they've got a service they want to make it as easy as possible for you to use that service so you can just download essentially a kindle app on your phone that will let you uh, uh, basically assign your your local library card to this app and then sign out books and materials it will uh, you just it ought just stuff will uh, land on your phone and it expires and but in, in the meantime you get to read the entire book uh, the standard app used to be and still is overdrive that uh, most library systems were using last year there was a much better excuse me a much more accessible version uh, by this makers of the same app called Libby that is it really does come across like a Kindle app or the iBooks app it's very very polished uh, you it really is like a very standard uh, fun looking uh, a book reading app that will run on Android it'll run on iOS uh, in United States libraries you can even use the, use the iOS app to like a, to uh, sign out a book but then have it sent to your Kindle reader uh, and it will all just work fine uh, some people have uh, multiple library cards like they might have a library card for the town they live in but they also have like a Boston Public Library library card or they go to a college and they also have a college library library card Libby one of the one of its unique advantages is that you can consolidate all of those cards into this one app and so all the books you've signed out everywhere are right here on this one device uh, and it's free 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 it's just it's just there to help you uh, use all the stuff that uh, that your library lets you use and uh, unlike the, its predecessor or its, let's say its, its partner uh, app overdrive it really is more consumer oriented overdrive has never has has always been a very good app it's never come across like a hack or anything like that but it doesn't it Libby feels more like when there is a startup that really wants to corner the market in book publishing and knows that it has to be as friendly as possible. Libby is the result, not overdrive. So definitely download it. You might as uh, one of the other nice features of Libby is that with many libraries, if you don't have a library card, you can even sign up for a library card automatically and not even again, having no friends. I have no need to leave the house and <laughs> challenge the giant day ball. Uh, so you can my, my local library doesn't I you have to you will have to have an awkward conversation with a social interaction with somebody you don't know. But that's OK, because then once they once you get your library card and the number is punched, punched into Libby, then you can go back to your house and never leave it again because you can just get this constant flow of, of books you never have to pay for it, but to sign out. So definitely, definitely do it. If no, if for no other reason that uh, not, not only will it give you access to an immense library of really great content that you don't have to excuse me you're already paying for by living and paying property taxes uh, or taxes in your in your community but also it might make you more aware of all the resources that your public library has and they are fantastic if you haven't stepped inside a public library in the past five uh, five years you might not recognize it and you might be kicking yourself that you have not been taking that two mile walk every now and then uh, to just basically use this wonderful community resource resource. And Libby is one of the tools that will help you make the most of that resource. So I can't recommend it highly enough. The San Rafael library had a VR uh, night, I think, or VR afternoon oh. yesterday. I was like, wow, VR and the we got to support our local libraries because yeah. they really are great resources. And of course, we all here don't really need libraries and people watching probably don't, but there are a lot of people who don't have access to this kind of stuff for whom a library is a, is, is a vital resource. And so we really want to, Let's support yeah, local libraries. I, you should, I mean, you, you should use it because even it doesn't matter who you are. They've got stuff that you can use. As a lot of them are, are putting are using some of their conference spaces for like for maker spaces. They're right. acquiring like three D printers. So if you want to learn three D printing, uh, there can good community centers. But you're absolutely right when there when there are people who say that oh well we should have less less money for libraries because nobody reads books anymore. That's true. But uh, I I work a lot uh, at my local libraries. Fortunately, it's only about a half mile half mile walk away. It's one of the wonderful things about where I live. But every time I'm there, I pat, my favorite place to work is one of the tables that's sort of near where all the public uh, PCs are. And that's and whenever I pass by and I can see something on the screen, not that I'm looking, 
it's basically people who are looking for job assistance or looking for uh, getting on government programs. They don't have, they may not have a computer, they may not have internet access, they may not even have an actual fixed address, but if they can go to the library, they can still get their veterans benefits that they're completely entitled to. They can still figure out how to get a home loan with government assistance. They can figure out, it's, it's such an important community resource that one of the it's it's one of the few statements that a stranger can make to me that will make me immediately judge them if they're saying that i don't know why we, there are other libraries or nobody but it's only for old people and they they're already already retired they don't need a library anyway why are we paying for it that's I, i've actually heard people make statements like that uh, some people in government as a matter of fact and that's when I have to. That's what turns Mr. Hand into Mr. Fist pretty quickly. I have to put it into, I have to put it into Mr. Pocket. And I think I think somehow libraries need to get to a point where they're community information centers, you know, rather than being th thought of as a collection of books. You know, there there's a lot of information that you can learn, interact with, and so on and so forth, uh, as opposed to just being. A, I think most of us think of libraries well, is that's, just a book, that's, that's book what that's what they are they, they just don't use the they have they have resources every time they get money they use them into creating more services and resources for the community they're not buying bus ads unfortunately if more people again just basically made a made it made a just make, just make a list of there's a list of things that you do every time you change the clocks forward or back because it's a good way to remember it like okay it's, i changed the clocks back so i'm gonna i'm gonna change the batteries my smoke alarm i'm gonna clean the filters in my air conditioning system i'm also going to visit my public library to see what's changed in the past six months because chances you know are what? howard schultz put a lot put a starbucks in my library you'll see a lot more of me let's <laughs> <laughs> there is, you know, there, 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 there is, a, there is a really wonderful coffee coffee shop called the Newsfeed Cafe at the Boston Public I Library. Think that's it was a great the, idea. It's, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the huge renovation they did of yeah. this uh, this horrible, brutalist extension they made to the beautiful McKim Building uh, that was built in 1971. It, it looked as as I was fond of saying, it looks like the place where in Eastern Europe you would go to beg a party official for any information about your dissident uncle who disappeared six days ago. It was that ugly and that intimidating. And they've turned the entire thing into it's, it's still a library, but the entire first floor is like open space with Wi-Fi. Sit down, be comfortable, do work, get a coffee, get a cookie. You can't take the coffee and the cookie anywhere you want, but you can take it into a lot of places. It's also where the radio studio that I occasionally do public radio in is. Uh, and so it's uh, oh, that's visit beautiful. your I've library. Seen the, it's, it's I've wonderful. seen the pictures you've posted. That's a beautiful. That's a great studio. Uh, you, you may have noticed I have a little buddy on my. Uh, Oh, on my computer. Look at the little friend jo have just joined us. Look at him. Isn't he cute? Look at this. I could tear his arms right off. <gasps> no. <laughs> Monster. This is Alex Gumpel's pick of the week. And I have to say, I am all for it. This is Classic Bot, designer toy figures in geek culture. Look at this. This <gasps> is the collection of Classic Bot uh, toys that you can add the Trash Bot and friends. Um, <laughs> wow. Is this cool? Uh, feel free to open it, he says. Well, I don't know. I don't want to ruin the collectible value of this. Uh, it is it is mint in box, Leo. It is, it is <laughs> I mean, mint only in the box. mint in box. But yeah. I will show you the website, classicbot.com, a toy and lifestyle brand for anyone with a passion for classic computer designs. Mail, error, trash, folder, and disk icons brought to life. He's carrying a little a little uh, briefcase with the uh, with the font the font briefcase in it. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh, Created nice. by a Hong Kong startup uh, founded by Philip Lee. It's called Play Some Toys. And uh, I, I guess if you go to the shop, you can, uh, you, can, you can pick some up right now. $32 for the Trash Bot and Friend play set. But you've got, I really think <laughs> you need the Classic Bot Classic for $27. And now you really, you're really uh, set. He's our, Alex is already ordering it. Good job. Alex Gumpel has come up with a pick of the week, uh, completely uh, bendable. Uh, and I think, you know, the way it's set up so that it sits right on your uh, computer, the edge of your computer, I think is really cool. That's a, that's so a good, that's a good, that's a good design. Classicbot.com. It's pretty. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. It's a Mac classic. Breaking news, Leo, we're now good friends. We're one heart good friends. I know. How did that happen? Because <laughs> we, we exchange gifts. I love you. I would give you more stuff, Renee, but I don't have anything. So I no. Have to and the thing is, you you only have to do one thing a day. So you can alternate, or you can do a raid together, or you can attack a gym together. I have to say, I haven't played Pokemon Go in a long time, and they have added a lot of features. Features they had talked about adding in the beginning, things like yep. trading uh, stuff. And I'm just thrilled. I uh, I am, and a lot more 
uh, play uh, playability. So I think I'm going to pick it up again too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's, we I played it in Japan. I was yeah. hoping, I was hoping there'd be some interesting stuff to. to High capture. density places are fun. Yeah. Oh, really fun because you just you yeah. don't. You could stand in one spot and just raid like. What they crazy. do also now is they have a community day. So for three hours, once a month, they pick a, a Pokemon like a, uh, I don't know Charmander or the last one was Larvitar, and they just spawn everywhere, and you catch shinies, and you go out in groups of people. They also uh, now they give you a weather forecast, and some Pokemon yep. types uh, are stronger, appear more frequently, and give bonus Stardust when caught. Uh, ben, depending on the weather forecast. And the weather effects are gorgeous. Like I had snow for six months in the game and it was, it was gorgeous. <laughs> well, I don't know it, how and gorgeous the rain is, is amazing. The but rain yeah, looks see, really good. Yeah, this is really, uh, the, you know, I almost want to say it's a shame they didn't do this right away. I understand why they didn't. They barely could keep the yeah. thing afloat. But uh, I hope people do take a look at Pokemon and go again because that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Lisa was mad at me when I launched it in Japan. She said, let's, let's not get into that again. <laughs> Sorry, Lisa. <laughs> but we, but it was fun. It was really fun. All right. Hey, thank you everybody for joining us. Thanks to Alex Gumpel for uh, my pick of the week. I was actually going to talk about Firefox six, sixty one, but that's kind of dull. Firefox now has uh, is going to have data from Have I Been Pwned and One Password incorporated into it to help you detect uh, risky sites, sites maybe where your password's been leaked, things like that. So, um, and I've started using it on the Mac, and it's really nice. Maybe a good alternative to Chrome. I'm still going to probably depend on Safari more than anything else. But the new Firefox uh, is is great. They've really, uh, I think, made a, a nice open I was source a, project. I had moved away from Safari for a long time, and now I find myself using it. Well, I think more. Apple wants it to be your choice, and I think that they are making it better and better in order yeah. to do that. I use it on my laptop because it really does help battery life battery. so much. Right. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, actually, there's no reason not to use it on your laptop. But on your desktop, you might want to have more than one choice. You know why I have three browsers on my I shouldn't admit this, but Bloomberg only gives me 10 pages a month per yeah. browser. <laughs> <laughs> so now I get 30. Right. 30 Mark yeah. Germans. Once a day, I yep. can look at You're Bloomberg. not using Opera? Oh, that's 40. See, there's 40. <laughs> See, okay. I, I, I got I have, this model. Nope, I, I have, you, you, you can tell how scared I am about being tracked for the information I'm looking for by what browser I use. My my normal one is, is Chrome. I will use Safari because I, I'm concerned about like marketing people's has a little bit more security, but still the same browser. And then I have Tor browser, which is I'm going to be. I'm just curious about how much the how, how much this house that I just packed by might, might be selling for. I don't want to be on some list of people who are shopping for houses, no matter <laughs> what happens. Yeah, so that's uh, why I have multiple multiple browsers. Uh, I think Firefox actually is good for tra anti tracking as well. I think they've got a yeah. very good uh, story. They're all getting better. It's nice. Yeah, they all are. Yeah. Hey, what a fun show. Thank you, everybody. Renee Ritchie, iMore.com. Don't forget the Vector podcast. He's got more coming today, probably. I have a 40-minute video on iOS 12 if anyone wants to deep How dive. How did I know? <laughs> you know what? You've become, uh, literally, I'm not kidding, Renee, one of the top resources for me in, uh, in keeping oh, thank up you. on iOS and Macintosh. Uh, iMore is fantastic for this. You guys do such a good job. iMore.com. It should be absolutely on your on your start page. Uh, thank you, Renee. Andy Anako, I-H-N-A-T-K-O, at Anako on the Twitter. Thank you. Uh, and... I'm Yes. I'm, I'm also going to be speaking on public radio. I'm going to be on uh, Boston WGBH radio again on uh, on Thursday from 1130 to about noon, probably talking muchly about not just uh, the usual policy stuff, but I want to talk about uh, the new iOS and the new Mac OS as well. So Fantastic. you can hear me blather on a little bit more there. Well, there you go. Another Yet another resource for all your <laughs> new Mac news. And of course, Anna, Alex Lindsay from the Pixel Core Best way to keep in touch with Alex, follow him on Twitter, at A-L-E-X-L-I-N-D-S-A-Y. And I'm uh, I'm speaking, I'm doing, producing a successful live stream uh, at Inspire on Thursday. Uh, I'll be at the Union Square uh, Ballroom, I guess, in New York. Um, in the afternoon, it's free. Two hours. That uh, sounds put, great. Being put on by That's Adorama. Great. So uh, anyway, you can uh, you can sign up for that kind of thing. There's the link for it uh, on, on, on the Twitter. So, on the Twitter. It's an event, right? All yeah. right. A-L-E-X-L-I-N-D-S-A-Y. Yep. We do Mac Break Weekly right after iOS today. Make it your uh, all Apple Tuesday. Around about 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. If you want to stop by and listen to the show as we produce it, you can also get on-demand versions of the show after the fact at twit.tv slash mbw. Or pick up your favorite podcasting uh, appliance and download it. You can subscribe, and that way you'll get it every week.
or listen to it. It's on Google Home, uh, Amazon's Echo. So you can even say, what is this? What is the uh, Shlomo command? Is it, hey, Shlomo, listen to Mac Break Weekly? I bet it is. I bet, yeah, try we'll play it. Play Mac Break Weekly, Play yeah. Mac Break Weekly, I bet it is. And you'll get the latest episode. Hey, thanks everybody for uh, listening or watching. We appreciate your being here and we'll see you next time. But, gotta say, time to get back to work because break time is over. Take your little Mac with you. Oh, I broke his arm off. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Isn't that cute? Next Maybe. time it's us, Andy. Behave, behave. <laughs> I'll break your arm off. And That's yours. fine.